The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 929 Tuesdays. We've been talking professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the social medias in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, where something's going on next door. There, <laughs> That has nothing to do with this show, but I don't know. There's just forklifts coming up into my driveway, and I don't know what's happening. Uh, but anyways, we'll find out about our new neighbors shortly. Hell, we were live on the show, and there was a car accident out front a few weeks ago. So, you know, it is part of the story, the story of Beachview and Sugar Tramina. But we do have with us, first of all, uh, my side buddy, The Riz, is with us side buddy i don't know i i was trying to think of something cool that's as close as i got that's 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 the best i could come up with on two seconds you're my buddy on the screen on the side of me you're literally my side buddy you're like in the sidecar of this podcast right now you're like robin without the shorts but and i got the button that just releases the car and we don't know where you're gonna go i watched an adam west tiktok recently yeah that's 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 fair sir yo yo burt ward probably has some trauma i'm so i'm saying <laughs> anyways you can discover that on tiktok but also with us uh, speaking of trauma we have on the empty top tag rope uh book tour it is debuting some guy named john and returning joe murphy oh boy that buddies means- inc whoa whoa, whoa. we are here and we are happy to promote our novel there you go there you go. You get so you got this book. What we talk about is the empty tag rope, an eight eighty wrestling mystery. Um, what does that say at the end at the bottom there? Uh, inspired by true events, Insp- uh, by Joe Murphy's best friend, some guy named John. Okay, you know, it's really it, it's you know we'll talk about it a lot, I'm sure. But the foundation is a, a lot of the real life detective work that Joe Murphy went through, and you know I'm just writing it. Joe Murphy is my muse. He is my best friend. We okay. are buddies, Inc. Okay. Joe All means right. a lot. He's here watching right. your Sherlock. Yeah, totally. There you go. He could be your side buddy. Yeah. yeah. No. I mean, we think side buddy is a very offensive term. We would That's never right. call Thank each you. other side Thank buddies. I'm trying, I'm trying to make it a <laughs> thing. I'm trying to make <laughs> fetch happen over totally here. Right. I'm so We're sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. Anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're going to talk some wrestling. And the biggest thing in everywhere I've been... Every wrestling locker room I've been around this weekend. Okay, it was actually I think it was only one wrestling locker room, but I was there twice. Everybody's talking about the Mr. McMahon documentary on Netflix. Everybody's watched it, I think, at this point. It was six episodes. It was the most interesting thing since I uh, Lion, uh, uh, not Lion King, uh, Tiger King. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's actually by the same people from from what I understand too. Um, obviously, the story of the background. If you haven't heard by now, um, this was a documentary that was being worked on back in 2021. I think it had a different tone to it originally. Uh, in they they remind us every episode that the uh, interviews, the last of the interviews, um, were halted due to the the allegations that came out in 2021 with Vince McMahon. Don't need to recap those right away here. But generally, um, binged it. I got work done, I swear, on Wednesday. Um, but yeah, no, but it was on the side. I was watching the whole thing and 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 binged the whole thing on Wednesday. A lot of people watched most of it, if not all of it, last week. Um, so I'm really curious in the chat room. I have some. We put the question out on our social media earlier, so I'm going to get to some of those comments here in a moment. But generally, um, what is our vibe off of? I know, uh, John, you did not watch it. I have not watched it yet. Um, I'm very well versed in Vince allegations, so I'm curious. Uh, <laughs> That's your side hobby is Vince McMahon allegations? Uh, We're investigating. I, I've read up a lot on them over the years, so okay. I, I'm curious what it actually covered. Uh, I, I have three kids, so finding an appropriate time to watch it oh, is a bit difficult. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Not ready to show them, Mr. McMahon. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, <coughs> How old are the kids, though? Oh, geez. Uh, three, four, and not even a year. Mm. So not a there's nothing there's no. nothing in there. I can say there's nothing graphically in there. There's some discussions, but I, I mean, if if they do you have the news on? 
in the room. Not I mean, really. Okay, that's, that's great. That's actually yeah. great. That's actually really good. Like, there's, there's not a lot of graphic in there, like regarding like Vince and stuff like that. There's a lot of like clips from the Attitude Era. Yeah, that's true. Which is very that is true. Salacious. They get into some of what was happening with the women at the time. Yeah. So yeah, that that by itself is probably. Uh, a, a thing so okay yeah there's some terminology maybe like uh with airpods on or something i don't yeah, know yeah I, yeah I, I plan on watching good, it, but good. I'm, I'm curious to learn a little about it tonight yeah uh mm-hmm. so so i uh, joe i know you watch you have a like we've we've talked a lot about this last week we have yeah yeah so yeah no i i watched it like i watched the first five episodes i think it was wednesday and then thursday right before eight uh thursday night fights watch it live you know uh, right here yeah right here <laughs> <laughs> on indie wrestling.us yes yes uh, I, I watched that right before I came down to you know work. So but yeah, no, it's, it was uh, it was certainly an interesting time. So I, the biggest thing is, and Ray, you watched it as well. What was your I, initial thoughts on it? The first, like, if you wanted the the whole like the whole scoop of it, the first ten minutes is probably the best part of it. Okay, so the, the, the 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 little the little. Uh, appetizer to mm-hmm. everything else that's happening mm-hmm. so they're talking about vince and his dad mm-hmm. of course and then like and then there's it's so an emotional moment where vince is like talking it up doing all this and then they cut to tony atlas <laughs> sleeveless <laughs> button down top i think are you the one that keeps putting in every chat room he still doesn't wear sleeves yes okay and, and I, I kind of want to bring that to, you know, this show one day, not, mm-hmm. not now, obviously, but, you know, maybe one day I'll bust out like a, a, a sleeveless button down, but he just goes, I don't think he liked his dad. That, like, that, that entire thing, just that one little, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> like, like that was the first line he it was said in this. So movie. happy like, in this whole thing, I think. So happy yeah. to see Tony Atlas as part of this thing. Like adds so much to it. Dude, Tony Atlas is like the weirdest cameo in that, but he's also like the highlight of the whole thing. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. I uh, I have not. I've never told you my Tony Atlas story, have I? No. It does not oh. involve feet. Um, but I, Wait, you do know I what? Know this? From WrestleMania 29, when I was at WrestleCon. That's already a great setup. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will save the story for Patreon. Okay. 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 Right. So no. let's 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 go ahead and do that. Uh, but anyways, this it's not about the Tony Atlas story. Uh, but but yeah, no, I think he was a great because Tony was a great. If you've ever seen a Tony Atlas interview in the last twenty years, or met him, or seen him at a show, like he is the matter of fact guy. You know, mm-hmm. you know and the. the there had to been like we have to get Tony Atlas on this show, yeah. <laughs> kind of like, thing going I, I, on. I don't know if 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 anybody else ever saw the True Life. I'm a pro wrestler uh, on MTV. I might have seen highlights of it. I don't think I've ever actually seen the full episode. Okay, his yeah, his portion is amazing. Just, just want to point that out there. Noted. But going back to Vince's uh, the McMahon stocky series, mm-hmm. um, I don't think it was for us. <laughs> because it, okay we, we've seen that we've, we've yeah like yeah. like like john mentioned we, he, I, we know the backstory of this we've seen a lot of we've either dark side story. of the rings or wwe documentaries about the attitude mm-hmm. era and, and wrestlemania and things like that i feel like there were things I, like like i feel like if you took those and, and again there was a great uh, I, I listened to the one from busted open where they had Matt Kemp on as a former employee. So they were down the hall from where they were shooting this thing with Vince and everything. So, like, you know, so you have that perspective of things. But but I love the, like, they were like, this is not for wrestling fans, the, the hardcore wrestling fans that have podcasts. This is for this is for the general audience, at, at the Netflix audience, right? This so is, there is yeah. a lot of, like, if you go in, I watched the, uh, for, I, I haven't finished it, but I was watching the Formula uh, documentary. The Formula F1 mm-hmm. documentary, right? And mm-hmm. it's very like, explain to me what this is and why this is important. Yes. You know, there were things where they were explaining kayfabe and heel. And, you know, I feel like every book you read from a wrestler has a page explaining kayfabe and yeah. heel and mm-hmm. face, right? Like you had that. They had, we had like three episodes till they got the heel and face. But anyways, I think when they got to the Mr. Mayor part of it. So it was mm-hmm. segmented out like that. And really, you know, the stuff you're waiting for was a little bit of a big nothing at the end. You know, hoping it would be something about these allegations and stuff. And they, I don't think they, they didn't specifically get into anything like that, I feel, other than what's out there. Um, well, I don't think there's, you, there, they could. You can tell the pivot because the fact that there were, I believe, Washington Post reporters, who I think are the ones reporting on this current 
slate of allegations are now a part of this documentary. Yes. Oh, okay. Obviously, yeah. this was supposed to be just one about Mr. McVan, and then they turned it into, well, we're going to really talk about... And also, the things that they dug up, I think, okay, we know what the attitude area. We know about Mr. McMahon. We know about Vince. We've seen Dark Side. We we've done Star- Dark Side. We've seen sh- uh, Wrestling with Shadows. Like, there's yeah. nothing terrible. There's even footage from Wrestling with Shadows in this. Um, and it, th- that is not the exciting, you know, newness of it. And I think we're glossing over the fact that there are things like talking about Mike Tyson and Stephanie asking, he wasn't arrested for rape yet, was he? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah? Oh. You know, like those moments are the most character forming and confirm your suspicions about the McMahon family. And the most, um, the biggest thing for me, and I don't know if you guys caught this, uh, it was about the ring, the, the, the first female ref in the late Mm eighties that they was being featured and interviewed on TNT and this, that, and the other thing, and then disappeared. And then there was a, uh, you know, I think it was officially rape allegations, right? Which, something. you know, something like that. And the part where Vince in 2021 is going, everything was consensual. And even if it wasn't, statute of limitations is up. It was just like, whoa, dude. Like, you... Ba- the- Why'd you say the yes. quiet part out loud? <laughs> but, like, at the very oh, end of the episode, they bring up, like, oh, in 2023, the statute of yeah. limitations on this case was, like, lifted yeah, yeah, and yeah. they settled on a court. And, I'm like, yep. whoa. Well, I on. actually talked to I, I was uh, my wife, who has a little bit of a legal background. Um, I, w- I, I was like, hey, this was interesting. And she like, and she's like, yeah, they did this in New York. They, they did, did a lift on this because of so many cases where they wouldn't talk in fear of retaliation. Plus, it's such a difficult thing to co- come out about. Uh, for any kind of uh, uh, sexual allegation like that. So they basically, I guess, opened the door for anybody to come out of um, statute of limitations and press uh, for a period of time or or just open it generally. I don't know how exactly that knew. But either way, I think that's where this slipped in. I remember a few rock stars got in trouble for that because they had uh, bragged about a bunch of like the totally awful affairs they had with teenagers back in the day. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I got away with it. And then they reopened the statute of limitations. They're like, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you pass through New York on that tour? Well, <laughs> tell you what, buddy. Um, and and I would generally in that positive. And and I do also wonder if this clip that they showed played a part in that. <laughs> so I'm, sure I'm wondering if that played a part in. Uh, uh, they were just like, yeah. So, um, hey, Mister Da, we have this piece of footage here. Maybe you should look at this, you know. Yeah. Hey, hey, victim, maybe you should look at this and take it to your lawyer <laughs> kind of situation. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it that was, like, things like that, things like the story, uh, the Paul Heyman story about uh, uh, um, Shane and, and Vince. Mm-hmm. The background, I did not know the background with his father, you know, and especially from his perspective. Mm-hmm. And then, like, that informs at least the way this is edited also you know editing is a formation of opinion in this thing you know, so you should take for a little bit of grain of salt but there's some things that i don't think you can edit around <laughs> that are in here um if there's stories if you believe paul Heyman, but also the things with vince and shane kind of corroborate at least in tone the situation that paul Heyman talked about um the story about how Vince basically said, you will have to kill me here. Use this fork or knife or pen or something like that. You know, it was like, you can get me right here if you really want this business and stuff like that, which led to the hiatus, which led to jumping off the cell to just get a hug from his father, you know, Mm -hmm. like, holy shit. After this, there's a picture that came around with, I think it was Shane McMahon and the bucks in the past week. And I saw that again, like right after I watched this and I'm like, now I believe he'll go to AEW. <laughs> so when when, he was, when that, those rumors first circulated, that was the one thing I said. I'm like, if they sign him, I don't want to see him have a match. I just want to see him aligned with the Young Bucks and what they're doing right now because Shane just oh being their God. pal Dude, in Connecticut heat, would be the best. Heat, yeah. heat, baby. You know, like they are the they are the devil, right? Like it's right. just like, um, God, you know, it, it's it's like Eric showing up on Raw. Eric yeah. Bischoff showing up yeah. on Raw. Like, what are you doing right now? You know, um, you, like, I think that that would make the most sense, you know, but and also it's kind of in tune with how wrestling works. So it's like, hey, is it going to make money? Cool. Who cares if you try to put me out of the business? You know, yeah. if Swerve's right and they do something with Fox, like just have a McMahon on that first show. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if I agree with it. It's going to get people talking. No doubt. Yeah. 
I'm a big Shane guy, so like it, like this whole documentary made, made me respect him even more because I respect him as a performer, but like I didn't realize how much of the business like acumen he had. I'm like, oh, dude, this like really opened my eyes. It's like, and also made him more sympathetic. But yeah, no, well, I just hope Shane does. And also things. think about like this, Shane and Shane and Steph like came in the way they did. They do talk about that, and that's legitimate. They've been surrounded by the business and business in general, right? Uh, same with Triple H. That's why he's like, you know, he. I, I've seen the interviews with him where early on he's like, yeah, no, I wanted Vince to teach me how it works. I want to know how it works he, from the back, you know, from the first chance he could get and have that power. He wanted, you know, not power, but have the position to be like, I want to know how this works. Can I sit in the booking meetings just to understand it? You know, um, way before Stephanie. <laughs> way before stephanie was a thing um with him so so like i think but also everybody is learned vince's way mm -hmm. and shane went off and did other things uh this was i'm sure this is not new news to most people but the ufc potential of being bought by wwe like 20 years ago yes is really interesting considering how things turned out <laughs> so um that, that's really fascinating yeah, no, like my favorite part, of, like I guess one of my favorite parts of the documentary that wasn't like tied to crime, I guess, was uh, <laughs> was Shane going up to Vince be like, hey, we should really buy the UFC. And Vince is like, no, we do sports entertainment. We don't do real sports. And they just cut to like, oh, here's the XFL. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Why are you like this? <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, I thought it was interesting because it talked about Vince had some very Vince points because mm -hmm. they were big about intellectual property and these characters and little Stone Cold as a character will live on past his Hulk Hogan will live on past because you can continue to do things with that character and make money off of yes. it. Legends contracts doesn't matter if Hogan can barely walk right now or any of these guys. Mm -hmm. You can still use them in content, use their content, use those characters. Hell, you can do a Muppet Baby style retelling of everybody from the 80s that they have rights to that has a legends contract and died in perpetuity and, you know, in their families and everything. Right. Um, man, you should get paid for that idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they own all this shit at WWE. I don't want another letter. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but anyways, so, so, um, so the idea of, well, those guys, they get hurt, they're done and they're punching each other for real, that, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, this doesn't make sense. You know, they can't apply their formula to it. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm sure they could. Well, I think the, uh, the it, brawl it, for all is like great proof of that. Like mm -hmm. you know, they tried mm -hmm. using that to get certain guys over, mm -hmm. and Bart Gun rose to the top. You're, you're not really expecting that. Mm -hmm. Real badass. Uh, you couldn't really do anything with <laughs> Bart Gun. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it just like you know, how do you control who rises up? No, I think Dana White knows how to do that. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I think there's oh, yeah. you can't. I don't. I uh, okay. I've done I've done MMA shows. I've watched some UFC. I do not understand how this is not like, like you put fights together, like you, you, you're still very much controlling a narrative Yeah. in, 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 in MMA, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're setting up like what you hope to be exciting fight, but also a lot of like, this guy's just going to wipe this guy. This guy's just a build match. Like there, there's literally jobber matches in UFC, Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And, and, and like, I don't understand how that is. I've never understood boxing and 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 those structures and things like that, you know, and 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 and, and how that kind of all goes together and how that lineage goes and how do you you know build up through that? Like yeah. like I don't, it, it does seem like a little pro wrestling. Hey, you have to be a good fighter, but all, you also have to be entertainer. Maybe that's just a more mm -hmm. recent thing that I'm seeing. No, no, no. That's it. I mean, that's Muhammad Ali, like, right? I mean, sure, Simpson, but like, yeah, like Ali and and even like Tyson and Holyfield and like. You, you have those conflicts in, mm -hmm. you know, boxing and all that. And even in UFC, yeah. like for those years. Yeah. So it's not a new thing. It's just more, it's just more ex like presentable in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the light of the, the age that we're in, which yeah. is internet. Yeah. Which is yeah. here. Like we're, we're doing things like it. The next video is probably going to be a talking point or like a, a, a promo or a, a, a weigh in with a UFC guy. Mm -hmm. Like it's just one of those things where it's just like promoting that fight, promoting that event, promoting that next bout, promoting something else. You have to have that guy to be like, to get somebody's attention to pay those $50 for a pay-per-view or, or something like that. Or, or even in WWE's case, less than that. But there's still that there's there's more 
to do in that. That's why the UFC mm-hmm. has weekly, almost weekly pay per views. Absolutely, at this point, or at least they have fight nights or something on ESPN Plus, right? Yeah. Yep. So, like, yeah, no, absolutely. So I guess that's what I can do with my new ESPN Plus that I inherited. I, I feel like UFC. there's a bit nice. of a control difference, though, with like, mm-hmm. you, you know, MMA, if somebody's legitimately the best fighter, mm-hmm. they're going to be your top guy. Right. Where in WWE, if you're the best wrestler, it doesn't mean you're a top guy. No, 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 no. Yeah. If you get the most over, it doesn't mean you're a top guy. Mm-hmm. Vince decides you're the top guy. Yep. Yep. yep, which has changed, and, and there's I think there's more openness, and I think we've seen that. Yeah, I think we've seen some great examples of that. You know, you know, and, and it keeps saying like, hey, more people have an opportunity to be top guy yep. now than ever before. I, agree I think you can, I think that. you can see that. I, I mean, it, it, when you see who's headlining Raw from week to week, and I love these marquee matches that are happening on Raw. Um, so before we get to that, um, anything else about the McMahon documentary, anything that stuck out, anything that really kind of like uh, changed the narrative, added to a narrative, um, um, from this. I I mean, I thought the interviews with the McMahon family were the most interesting of all. Oh, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm I I probably shouldn't talk about this, but, uh, like I have a new disdain for Bruce Pritchard after watching this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Because I always thought he was like such a suck up. And then I watched this documentary and then I seen the final episode. And I'm like, oh, my God, this dude is like the fucking. Oh, am I allowed to swear? Fuck. Yeah. yeah, yeah you're, OK, fuck. cool. I've yeah, been on the show like I'm trying to now. I'm trying to cover up this corporate logo over here so I can swear on the show. Sick. <laughs> OK. But yeah. No, he is like the glazer of the decade. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> bro's just like, oh, no, this whole thing was just a hit piece on Vince McMahon. He paid for my wife to have cancer treatment. And like, yeah, no. But yeah, th- mm. he can do all these things. But it does not uh, it, not it, make him a, you know allegedly very bad person so i'm yeah. like all right come on buddy like, i think you're not even in the company anymore Who, why are you doing this a lot of these people well, i think i think i think this is one of those cases of both things can be true yes the wrestlers talk a lot about vince as a father figure and also very thankful and i think this line was said somewhere in there with like that one journalist or dave Meltzer or something which hey they got dave Meltzer to clean up his 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 room so they, that was pretty nice sure did i was just very impressed by that i'm like is that dave Meltzer? i can't recognize him can't without that background files on the floor i know right so it's crazy um yeah. but uh <laughs> so but uh there was a point where like uh, oh of course they see him as a father figure he's sorted him through his funnel Gave them a life Mm -hmm. (laughs) in riches and fame. You know what I mean? So they literally do owe everything to the Vince McMahon machine, lead machine. So uh, much like, I don't know. I feel like this is not, this is not apples to apples. This is like much like a lot of us had to reconcile. How do I, how do I identify? Like I appreciate Chris Benoit's work, but also have to acknowledge what he did. Yes. Right. And I think that's what's what I think a lot of people have to reconcile. John Cena, uh, Undertaker, were like, that was my guy. That was my best friend in life, my boss, my, and the reason for my being. Mm-hmm. I'm going to back him up because he backed me up somehow. Yeah. It is like a mob mentality. I just started oh, playing yeah. Mafia last night. It is a mob, and I've been playing Yakuza. Uh, so it is, but it is, it, it, and they alluded to that. And, it, and I remember talking about those early days of the territories. I would not be surprised, you know, there's always uh, uh, suggestions of, of the, the history of New Japan's tied in the Yakuza. I would not be at all surprised to find out anything anywhere where Vince McMahon Sr. in the World Wide Wrestling Federation was connected with the mob in New York. Oh, 100%. Like, like how could it 100%. not be at that like, point, right? It's, it's in New York. It's, yes. it's, 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 it's right there. Cheap how I, I how else do all. you get the Madison Square Garden in the 60s? Chief J. Strongwell absolutely knew where, knows there's bodies buried. There's somewhere. a lot of guys there yeah. probably know where the bodies like, are. So Yeah. Like, and, and they only lightly, like, I feel like there's certain things they only lightly brushed on because they know there's a dark side of ring you can go watch <laughs> like the snook allegations and, and yeah, things they like that do not address but, the snook allegations. but then i didn't know everything behind the um uh oh gosh who's the the one with the one that lost the belt in the 80s uh, wendy richter wendy, wendy richter. richter i didn't know the wendy richter background mm-hmm. so i uh, you know maybe i haven't watched every episode of dark side it might be in there i don't know i yeah. think it was the may young one, yeah I think. It, it was a may young as a spider not right? may young uh, the obvious one yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. that was me. You're right. You're right. Um, which is a whole other bag of oh, buddy, is it that we don't even get into the thing. Yeah. So, it's like, <laughs> um, so wrestling is dirty. 
Oh, no it's a lot it cleaner is. than it used to be. So, I, I, oh, 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 come on. It is clean. Okay. Okay. <laughs> some of the, like, come on. It, it's it's cleaner now, but. I'm not talking about the locker room in the, at the, at the spring <laughs> oh, okay, school. Okay. okay. I'm talking about wrestling in general. Yeah. Uh, you know, on top of Me Too a few years ago, on top of this, you know, like I, you know, there's and there's some shitty people out there, and they're well, uh, they were all always will be, especially well, yeah, as say, there's young wrestlers are coming up. There are always going to be people that are going to try to take advantage of them, and that's what you, you you watch out for each other out there as far as that goes, um, and and uncover that stuff and speak up on that stuff if you have the ability to do so, mm-hmm. um, absolutely. But uh, again, we are definitely not we're not in that it's i i cannot we don't have unless i find out there's a tony Khan sex ring <laughs> you know this other stuff possible. who who knows like anything's freaking possible these days um in and and you know i i think generally it's better for it it's better for vince not being in it hopefully everybody learns from it <laughs> you know it's a yeah. different company it's 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 they have to clean stuff and and this that and the other thing and they have to be more public with things um the the fact that they've gone away with what they did as a public company in the last 20 years is kind of astonishing uh, agreed so yeah. um but yeah no but you know hey but um glad we cleared all that air before raw starts on netflix in january yeah. <laughs> yeah that was very surprising they did the vince doc especially with raw coming i'm like man is that not gonna do anything bad for the brand and i'm like well i guess not. it's not really who associated. gives a fuck they gave him a ton of money for 10 years that's true who yeah, I gives think this a was more about awareness and pro wrestling yep. just like reminding people hey like they're going for a wider audience on Netflix, and I think this mm-hmm. is one of those things where WWE's reluctance to keep with the times has helped them mm-hmm. because if they had been a part of that glut of we're going to streaming five years ago, I think we could have lived in a reality where Monday Night Raw got canceled mm-hmm. because those yep. streaming places spent all this money and then immediately regretted it, mm-hmm. and we're kind of in that post wave where they're like, oh shit, we need content again. Yep. But now, yeah, you now you're in with everybody wants football. Yeah. yeah, everybody wants the NBA. So now, like, and like Netflix is doing the the Tyson fight here coming up. Uh, oh. Rescheduled, of course. So it like, goes right along with what we just heard, right? Yeah. So, wow, um, crazy. and and I would not be surprised if AEW gets a streaming play with one of the big guys because I mean, everybody wants live. Just like for network television, mm-hmm. live is key. And now for streamers, live is key. Yes, I have noticed. That every app I have has a news feed now. Yep. Thanks, Disney app. I'm just trying to watch Star Wars and Inside Out, and uh, you got to let me know about the de- debate tonight, for instance. Okay. Oh, right. You own ABC. That's right. Did not even realize. I also did not realize that. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, and yeah, and I want to go watch my Batman, and I'm reminded CNN is a thing. And then I want to go watch my Ninja Turtles, and I'm ri- reminded CBS News is, is a thing. You just learned a lot about me. Um, <laughs> So, anyways, you can also learn a lot about us on the Patreon, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Thank you to our friends that do support the show. We do try to stick around, give you a little bit of something extra. It was just me and, and an old friend catching up with what movies we watched last week and talk. I don't even know. We just talked about like the kid and stuff. I think we forgot the Patreon was on and just kept bullshitting for like an hour or so. And then we put it on the feed. And if you want to listen to it and find out what's going on with us behind the scenes, that's that's fine too. Um, so we definitely talk about some stuff we definitely cannot touch in public here on on the Patreon. Uh, thank you everybody that does support the show, including at the fan of the show level, Bo Diggity! Woo! As well as I didn't load the thing up. I'm in the wrong account. Oh, okay. I, don't, I don't know. I Good lost. Job, I lost my Good momentum. I, I thought it was. Job. I thought it was in the right place. Hold on. Great there, job, just sorry. this one over here. Okay, here it is. Yeah. As well as Team Hammerfist, the Putupac family. Uh, Megan Nelson and Bubba Brewer and Jason French at the Poppy Club level. Uh, Dave Profod partner, spouse of Rooster Julia Fair at roosterfair.com. Rats in a trench coat, Tony Kincaid, Pizza Club level, The Riz, as well as the manager at the manager level, uh, Bradley and Tina Keys. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the show. Patreon.com slash Russell hey, Show. You do all this. Which guy? Oh, I oh, oh that that's guy. right. Bra- no, no, there he is, Bradley. Oh. Bra- getting his wedgie in West Virginia. <laughs> That's a West Virginia wedgie right there. Very yep. interesting backdrop. That's right. That's very yeah. interesting. Sometimes he leaves it on when he has uh, that's business why, that's meetings. That's why you notice I took it right off. That's right. Because that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I want to show up to this meeting. And guess what my background is? No. Yeah. Nope. Yes. Yes. Kind of a power move. <laughs> that is. Yeah. The Riz power move. I like it. I like it. 
is Hogan in the background when you uh when when Ho- you have your meetings? He will not be in the background. No. Okay. No. Okay. He is only for the main. He only shows up for this to stare at us. What is he wearing? What's on his head? Is it the Hulk Hogan wrestle buddy? So Hulk Hogan wrestle buddy, and uh, that's your side it is buddy. A uh, very. I'm not going to grab it, but it is a uh, political hat. Just oh. want to point it out there. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know. The screens aren't big enough. I can't read it. <laughs> so it's a it's it's a white dude's for Harris hat. Okay. Oh, ah, okay. hey, you happen to be a white dude. I'm a white dude. Good, good job. Oh, yeah. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, we're not, we're not getting political. No, I swear no, we're, we're not, not getting political not, on this show. Yes, no, we're, we're not, not getting political. Let's <laughs> not do that. That's why buddies are here to talk the in, election. Yeah. He's in timeout wearing that hat. He's, mm. timeout. he's on timeout. Okay. <laughs> That's where we draw the line for Hogan and timeout. You think about it. You got to think about what you've done, Hogan, on so many levels. <sighs> Bad a blood. Is... Bud Light beer. <laughs> what? His beer. Yeah. His beer. It's a real American beer or something like that? Yeah, real American beer. He's Hope got yeah. a beer? beer. Is yeah. it like, is it Bud Light shitty beer? Because Stone Cold's beer is actually kind of good. Like, I, yeah, I'm no, this is, like, he, he made beer, like but... a Bud Light counterpoint like during the oh, whole flash. Oh, no. okay. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. It's available at your local it. supermarket. Is it really? Is it? I haven't seen it. Well, well we're not here. We don't have beer in our supermarket. Yeah. Well, well no. some of them we do. What is it at Sheets? I don't think it's at Sheets. I think it's like no. the, he the did like the same tour that Flair did. Whenever oh, he had the energy with drink. the mushroom energy drink. Oh, is that not a thing anymore? I haven't yeah, noticed it on I, AEW. I think that they deal went must. Oh, they, they oh they go- <laughs> No way. <laughs> this is just like, I remember watching an episode of Hogan Knows Best where he had the he giant does. palette of whatever energy drink he was peddling at the time. <laughs> and we're like, well, what are we going to do with this, brother? You know? Well, up in the ocean. I don't understand that. I remember hearing somewhere that they stopped paying AEW, which is why they were like, okay, bye, Flair. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, yeah, because it was um, they were paying for Flair's appearances. Yeah. So it was like cheap. Well, listen, man, it, you know, no matter what Flair's been up to, if I could get Ric Flair on the couch for free every week, like oh, yeah. I'd, I'd do it. You yeah. know, I mean, I w- if we could get uh, Ric Flair at eight eighty for free to plug a mushroom energy drink or something else even more ridiculous. I just don't want to see him bump or bleed. <laughs> I don't know. It scares me. If Ric Flair comes on AEW, he's taking a pedigree, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, definitely not on Thursday nights because that was a little bit of Wild West. But uh, but but still, but wouldn't that be wild? How's he gonna get down the steps? Carefully. Okay, we don't send him. We don't send him upstairs. Okay, for he just hides in the bathroom. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's just in the bathroom. By the way, hold on. No, that went actually. I'm gonna hold something for Patreon. Oh, he's gonna wear the two shirt. There's something that happened involving you guys, and I'm just wondering if it was a thing Uh, Uh, involving involving buddies. Yeah, but I don't want to talk about it on the show just in case it's a thing. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to say I'm making a note for all Patreon right. here. So, okay. all right. Anyways, Bad Blood uh, is coming up this weekend and um, appreciating that it's early because uh, UFC said, hey, man, we have a UFC fight this this night. <laughs> Why don't you bump yourself up to 6 p.m. Eastern time? <laughs> so, really? which works for me because a friend of ours is DJing at Brillo Box on Saturday night. So, I think mm-hmm. it's going to end at exactly the right time Perfect. to also go do that. So, I I'm, love that PLEs or whatever we're calling them are earlier and earlier. Like the European shows, yeah, yes. I will actually watch them because. I am very much a catch the recap the next day. Yep. Yeah. Um, Got so, shit to do, especially like we're weekend. Perf- not well, okay. I would it's say like performers, football, you know, but it's yeah, an afternoon activity. You grab yeah. a few beers, you watch it with friends. It's it's great. Yeah. It's always an afternoon activity for our friends on the West Coast. So like, why the hell not? So true. You know. Um, speaking of us trying to get that chat room back up. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, I did have some comments about the McMahon documentary. I want to get this before we get to bad blood. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so <laughs> CL says, can't quite put my finger on it, but I get a bad feeling about the guy. Uh, let's see. Uh, bad one says, tell me, tell Atlas still hates sleeves. Oh God, this is a paragraph. Um, we, this is, is saying about has been a word for word. Bishop and Hogan have a lot of screen time talking about things that really don't have much or anything to do with Vince. Uh, aren't all that relevant? Yeah, there was like a lot of. It felt like there was. It felt like maybe they stretched this thing to six episodes. At yeah, some Hogan point. really liked talking to about, about Hogan. Oh that, my god! You know what? Fuck bad blood. Because <laughs> yeah. the part here's the part when we're talking That's about CTE. That's two why he's things. Over there. 
Two things. That's why he's in. Because you want to talk about? Hey, at least Hogan Stone? didn't say he didn't believe in CTE yeah, and concussions. Stone, okay. That was Stone Cold. Stone Cold says I don't believe in CTE. As they're showing the clip of him breaking his you neck in a pile <laughs> driver, he's saying, "Hey, I think anybody that has problems with their head and, and getting concussions aren't doing something right in wrestling." And then here's a clip of you taking a pile driver from somebody else. <laughs> yep. You know that literally almost killed your career and you. Um, and also just generally, they were just talking about concussions. Maybe they're not so bad. I, you know, I don't think it's a bad rap. I don't think Chris was doing anything weird, you know, with his, with his head and everything. And they just kept showing the gnarly, gnarliest Dying head headbutts. drops. No, they weren't even that. They were just like landings on his fucking head. Right. When a train like back body dropped and we went. Yeah. Like the they just, mm-hmm. just co- sh- kept showing them over and over as people were trying to downplay. Yep. CTE's <laughs> role in selective. the fucking the, murder the suicide of, of of Chris Benoit. What's that, Riz? The editor had some fun in this. Oh yeah, like he he's like, oh, they're gonna talk about this. We're gonna play you, something that totally contradicts it on this side. Yep. They're gonna do this. They're gonna like, do, do this, and it's like you ever like watch wow. something where you know the editor is just a holding up a middle finger to the speaker as you're watching this yes. thing. Like that was just like, oh, oh. Yeah. These are choices. Because mm-hmm. at first you're like, oh, they're just showing the diving headbutt. I'm like, oh, these are not the diving headbutts. No. These are just point blank him being dropped on his fucking head over and over again. They showed like oh, 10 of them. I swear. It is so, so gross. <laughs> Stone Cold being a CTE denier was like my favorite <laughs> joke that whole week. Yeah. Well, I remember what they were talking about when they were showing those clips. Yeah. It's when Hulk Hogan's trying to explain to you how a wrist wa- rock works. A wrist lock works and how you sell it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dude, he's like, I can react and I'm hurting and I'm not really hurting, brother. And then here's just boom, boom, boom. You know, it is as he's trying to explain away CTE. <laughs> Dude, the, the whole bit with uh, they're talking about like WWE's history with, with uh, concussions and then they bring up Nowinski and Vince is like, oh, no. Nowinski, he was doing a he was doing a headpiece on us. There's there's no evidence about any of this, and then they just jump cut to like, yeah, no, Chris is Chris works with us a lot. He comes down to the performance center. He gives uh, lectures about concussions and <laughs> all this other stuff, and it's just like, yeah, Chris is a big friend. I hate that guy. <laughs> it's very it's a very strange thing. Um, uh, maybe maybe a little bit. Um, uh, coincidentally, I was flipping. I, I throw up just random stuff like documentaries and stuff and, and podcasts while I'm, I'm working on stuff. Yeah. And 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 the Rob Van Dam Headstrong show popped up. Yeah. And um, it, 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 it's a documentary from 2019 when he was like kind of out on tours and he was dealing with some CTE issues, right? So, um, and it, by the way, friends of the show, uh, uh, Matt Light's a part of it and stuff too. But it's like he was literally starting to have that problem. Christopher Lewinsky fucking shows up on that show too. Yeah. <laughs> and he's starting to talk to him about stuff and Dreamer and things like that. But th- I thought that was just an interesting thing to have popped up in a week. Yeah, I'm no selling the ghost outside too. Yeah. Uh, that ghost yeah, was Tony yeah. Tondara. Is it fucking really? Yeah, well, no, they literally they literally took off the took off the 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 ghost get up and it was taught he's, he's doing like he's doing the Mick Foley wave <laughs> maybe I should maybe I, I should I unlock stopped looking maybe I, should I was un- no selling we had a ghost outside trying to <laughs> grab our attention a yeah. red ghost maybe I should have unlocked the door I, did you hear the door was he trying it I don't know he, they're just up by the up by the window okay all yeah. right haunted <laughs> haunted not a fan of buddies I learned about John Cena and being haunted on uh, the bear yesterday Uh-oh. so yes yes uh, latest season um so it was a nice surprise. Anyways, okay. Bad blood is this weekend. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> there was an argument. Of, there, not an argument. There was a discussion about how Hell in the Cell should be the main event of the show. Yeah. Yes, it should absolutely be the main event of the show because nothing is hotter right now than the Drew and CM Punk situation. Yeah. Like, and everybody's like, oh, it's not a bell. And everybody's like, who cares? Who cares? A good it's story a is a cell. good story. It's a good, it's, pr- it's, a, it's a reminder that you don't need a damn hardware mm-hmm. to have a good story. And well, it was, it, they were. It was. I'm sure it was a busted open clip. No, maybe it was a Sam Roberts. I don't know. It all blends together right now. Um, I thank you TikTok for bringing all those into my feed. Um, but anyways, like you know, the the fact that CM Punk has not had a singles match other than ones with Drew. Yes. Since he returned almost a year ago. Well, he had like a he had that house show match with with Dom. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, yeah, I don't. Did we count, count that we one? No, 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 no. So. no. No, half shows don't count. We know that. No. Yeah, no, half shows don't you count. You were a whole factor in Becky Lynch's and uh, uh, Rhea Ripley's storyline for like a year ago. Where I know, just, right? Yeah, it was, I know, right? They, they count when they have to, I guess. Yeah, they count. Exactly. They count when they have to. Yeah. Um, but they, they count when they decide that we want to put something on social media. Mm-hmm. Um, side note, um, all the social media around um, CM Punk bringing his dog to Raw, which is amazing. <laughs> last night <laughs> did you uh I, I don't know if you guys are chronically on x.com as much as joe murphy is but uh there was a clip of uh punk like talking or like wwe put out a uh, clip of like punk's dog or whatever and then drew just quote tweet uh quote re- i don't know what the new terminology is quote tweeted it with the video of uh fuck, jack it, black is qu- fuck kick- it is quote tweeted. <laughs> jack black kicking uh the dog off the bridge and anchor man <laughs> it's like oh yeah bro so what else is happening oh drew drew mcintyre's picture with jack perry was amazing <laughs> yes i i loved every second of it mm-hmm. yeah, same. Mm-hmm. I, I could care less about the bracelet but everything they've done around the bracelet mm-hmm. i think has been gold yeah. yeah and the whole point is the bracelet's not the point the bracelet is the representation of the point right it's about the message it's about the message brother yeah uh you know all that kind of stuff so yeah. uh no absolutely so so uh the the hell in a cell over a bracelet is going to happen this week yeah. <laughs> and and it just it was so perfect because and you knew this was going to happen you had bad blood coming in you got hell in a cell and the moment that we point somebody pointed out that they're absolutely doing the um uh sean michaels undertaker setup from leading into bad blood in the first hell in a cell at SummerSlam, which also yeah. happened at SummerSlam. I yeah. was like, so we're getting hell in a cell, bad blood. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's like, of deliberate. course they, of course they are. No, uh, sh- CM Punk is such a big new generation guy, which makes me feel vindicated, uh, vindicated mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. it. Cause like yeah. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. a new generation apologist. Like I think there's great stuff back then. Oh, this awesome. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So it's the one of two times that I left WWE. Really? It's what it cause what it was must be because of cable. Uh but and, and I just couldn't watch it anymore. I literally couldn't watch it anymore. Because <laughs> like physically couldn't watch it anymore. Um and uh and then and then a couple years ago, was it coming out of COVID or something? I gave up on it for a few months and just stopped. Oh geez. And I was like, fuck it, AEW's a thing. I'm good. You know, it was like the second or third year of AEW, and I'm like, these guys are hot. WWE's boring, fuck this. And then and then the Triple H SummerSlam where they brought back bring it damage control and all that stuff and the uh brock lesnar bringing a tractor of a forklift to the ring and flipping it like i was like i'm back I'm so see back. what you got papa h we are so back <laughs> yes we are so back and i think the train has been rolling yeah. pretty decently ever since a little bit of a hiccup when somebody decided to come back and grow a mustache um yeah the weird <laughs> pencil can we have a mustache can it's... we have there was always extra episodes and content for tiger king can we just have an extra content around the mustache decision oh you know you know there we just like, have a mustache episode i want to hear bret hart's take on the mustache I, oh. yeah yeah it's just literally everybody commenting because like oh man you don't know i think yeah they're not all new interviews so they're all probably from around that era so it's pre, oh, it's all pre-mustache yeah. we just get everybody on a zoom and be like so this mustache what the fuck listen john you are let's, a mustachioed. Anything else? You, so you are a mustachioed individual. This is a mustache business, as Matt Carlin keeps reminding me. I mean, I mean, how? I mean, <laughs> my mustache is not Vince's mustache. That thing. Was... Nobody is Vince's mustache. What species is Vince's mustache? Walt Disney and uh, who is the guy? The, the airplane guy, uh, Howard Hughes. It, it's very nineteen. 19- <laughs> the piss in the jar guy. Yes. Very much. Uh, it, it's that that archetype of creepy rich guy who has the the pencil the pencil yeah, mustache. Yeah. Oh. That, his complexion. It like looked like he had always just come from being cryogenically frozen. Like, <laughs> just like just like it's on ice, except for when he has a documentary or like a random tweet to warn us about a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it I, seems. I, just, I think you get a certain rich, like you get a certain level of. I always say, like, I think, I think being rich and successful is a disease of the mind to some mm-hmm. people, and you can tell by their mustache. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it it just outwardly projects. It's not just how they behave and they treat people in person behind the scenes yeah. that it ends up coming out on a Netflix uh, documentary down the line. Um, after after you you. you, you I almost laundry listed all their stuff that's wrong with Vince right now. Um, like but list of holds. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's, it's Jericho's thousand. It's the list of a thousand uh, Vince McMahon sins. 
allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. We are next to a church. Yes. Uh, so, um, anyways. How about bad blood? How about bad blood? Uh, I don't know. There's some <laughs> matches. There's going to be hell in a cell, and I know I'm going to get to MySpace night in time. That's all My, I need to know. I, That's uh, your preview. I, <laughs> I, I guess it's not bad blood officially. I think they, they advertise, advertised it for next week, but I'm very excited for uh, the rematch between Sami Zayn and Gunther. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. is it officially on a Raw? I think that I think they advertised that. Yeah, for next week. But okay, I, you know, it's not. It's I not on the card. It's on. Know. It's yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'm okay. sure some nope, stuff nope. will happen, but uh, I'm excited for it. You know, I was there for that Mania match. I, I had a great time watching it. Mm-hmm. Big Sami Zayn fan, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I, I think that's a good. It's also just good storytelling. Like, oh, I didn't win number one contendership. I didn't do this. This is like, I, I'm the only guy who beat you. Mm-hmm. I did it this mm-hmm. many months ago, but I did it. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So I get a world. Yeah. I love it. It's so it's, simple. It's very classic. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It, it, it. It's simple where it needs to be, complicated where it needs to be. How I love, there have been a lot of old clips of Bloodline story over the years, mm-hmm. including the one where everybody laughed at the idea of Solo becoming the new tribal chief yeah mm-hmm. like early on which yeah, is so great they looking they at now it a while yeah yeah so um yeah still wild on me when i watch sit down and watch smackdown it's like oh my god the gorillas of gorillas of destiny are fucking tag champions in wwe what the fuck happened yeah, and, they're, and they're out there <laughs> making like weird chittering yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 have you seen the cg video of <laughs> him no. just climbing the walls and knocking like ladies out the windows i'm going yeah 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 <laughs> it, 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 it keeps popping up in my feed and i laugh every time but it's still the creepiest fucking thing yeah. that you've seen and it burns in your brain and it's and i don't know what is making these it's a thing it, it uh, uh, I I want to I'm going to share it with the group whenever it comes up again because it inevitably will. Absolutely. Um, and it keeps getting truncated versions because the first one was like five minutes. I just, <laughs> and I just watched the whole thing for some reason and it just made no sense. Um, anyways, yeah. Let's get out of my neuroses that's and move same, on. That's the same guy. That the same guy that did like the Jacob Fatu's fighting like Roman and then fighting Cody and then fighting Goku. Yes, yeah, so, fighting. I've, yeah, I've seen those ones. <laughs> Like, like, is that the, the same guys that did I, that maybe, one? Maybe. I, I I don't know if it's the guys or... Or just like the version of that. Oh my god, this is a little cartoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's try that. No, no try spaces that. in the yeah. Is there, How do I just see the yeah, shit that yeah, yeah. I've seen on the internet? <laughs> I'm sure if you just scroll through Max, you can find it. Tama tunes. What's this? That's something Tama I'm going to have to look at later. Anyways, yeah. um, let's talk about literature in a moment but first go to indywrestling.us you can check out 880 wrestling for free live streaming thursday nights every thursday night the i'm workshopping this the longest running episodic wrestling show live from the western pa area um yeah I'm tell sure. me tell me when i'm telling lies no, no you're, you're on something but like i feel like it's probably more condensed like i'm sure we've beaten other Weekly episode. Well, I literally don't know if there's one another one out there because it's the it's the internet and it's huge. I don't, but uh, I'm sure I would have heard of it. But either way, that's there. And also, summer's over. Let's fight yes. from Friday night is also live on there. On uh, this is going to be any wrestling us YouTube and dot network for free. Um, the day. Yeah, buddy Zinc. That's right. That's Big right. Win. Had some yeah. some good stuff there. Um, and uh, you can you can see how all of them went over. Uh, God, I think we're we're approaching a hundred episodes. I need to figure out when the hundredth episode is going to be. By the way, by the way, Bubby George Ross has it down to a T. No, oh, does he? Yes, George. George. Oh my God. Uh, he had. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna take this opportunity to make fun of George as, a, as I love to do, and he hates it. Um, but uh, George, on his notebook, has every episode of uh, TNF in chronological order, like the dates and everything, which is admirable. Someone has to do it, but also, what a nerd. <laughs> So George, George has it down. Well, uh, that's what the McMahon duck. Both things can't be true. Yes, you know, yes. with respect. Yeah. <laughs> Respectfully, so, yeah. our anniversary is in January. So what? January was like around the fifty second. So yeah, probably in December. Yeah. December or late November, I'd reckon. Yeah. Well, we have roughly 50 ish shows a year. Yep. Yeah. So 
yeah, we did have. Wait a minute, that can't be right. Oh no, because I had the. Okay, so the number I'm looking at also includes the Friday shows. Mm-hmm. All right, and the no rings that we put up. Uh, so, and we're not entirely complete on the no rings either. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's how many episodes. It's not necessarily had. You know, so there, there's that situation. So I, I took it down. But also, hey, I, well, let me finish the ad real quick, and we can sure, talk a little sure. bit more about that. Also, uh, our friends at Neo Pro. I believe if you're on the network, you should already be seeing the. Um, you should already be seeing the ne- the newest Neo Pro show. I something happened to YouTube, and I'm trying to figure out what that you can't see it. Um, so, um, and I'm actually very curious looking at that right now. Um, but uh, generally, yes. Uh, so. Go check that out. Neo Pro's doing some great stuff. I think Tommy Dreamer was a part of that last show. Um, Rhino was a part of the show before that. And of course, the most recent uh, RWA show is up there uh, with also featuring Rhino. A lot of ECW lately. We had Sandman earlier this year uh, for a couple of shows. I put one of like just Sandman playing on a cell phone at ringside uh, <laughs> from with the, on his tag team match with John McChesney. Um, so a lot of good stuff going on there. And a lot of great free matches coming up here as well on the YouTube and, uh, and all the social media that we can put a video right now, honestly. I wear to put matches up on twitter now oh, uh so, so and we've been trying to stream the shows on there uh just to you know if it's if, apparently if it works for nwa we're going to try it too uh we started first not calling out nwa they're great partners for no, our project i use so but anyways um but we were there first uh, but anyways, so, um but yeah no we were actually watching a little bit of the nwa 76 here uh when because i was like hey this is happening you know let's let's see what's going on here um so and i guess something's happened on cw i don't know but either way, you, you just watch stuff at Indie Wrestling Night. Watch more wrestling, and we're going to give you more opportunities to do that. Um, and, uh, j- just just to point out a little bit, because you were just talking about it, I went to our favorite website, cagematch.com, uh, or mm-hmm. cagematch.net. Sorry, not go to go.com. Uh, we are at 80 Thursday night fights. 83 week. No, wait, wait. Actually, wait. We're at what? 80 what? 80 Thursday night fights. Oh, 80 man. of them. We need that 83. Right, okay. It, it, wait, okay. There should be more based right. on when the 50s. Yeah, that's the we, we need to. We need to. When you get the 80 episode 83, mm-hmm. just have somebody say, just do me a promo where you just yell 83 weeks like Conrad. Man, if only you had the two <laughs> promo guys at 880. Just somebody yeah, somebody like, out yeah. there. I want to put it in the world. You know, it could be you. It could be some jocks. It could be... I don't, We're who knows, shy. We never know? talk in the no, 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 no. No. Just give me that. Wink at the camera. And then... Maybe it's just showing I'll 80 results. buy another book. Why uh, just there you go. That? What's that? I don't like it. I don't like cagematch.net now. Whoa. <laughs> oh, Whoa. I'm sorry. Come on. It still but has, not, it still has Matt listed. Like we need to list. make a profile for cameraman Matt Carlin's after his, his rumble appearance last month. So he it just, just listed Matt, as, he just listed as Matt. Matt. <laughs> so I put his full name on there. Yeah. It's on the graphics. So somebody's not doing their fucking job. So anyways, Tony Kincaid has a full name listing. So, yeah. Uh, he also needs a profile now. So I'm I'm a, I'm on Cage Match. There you go. All my move names are wrong, but I'm on Cage Match. What's that? All my move names are wrong. They're wrong. Yeah, I, I sent I think over. It's like Wikipedia. I think you can go in and fix it, right? It takes like it actually. It's like a submission process. Okay. It's like a labor of love by the people who do it. So I, I can message them, but it took six to eight weeks for my profile to go live. Like <laughs> when I went live, I was like, oh, I forgot I did that. Because like, you know how many new wrestlers were out of training school are like, I get my K-Match oh, yeah. profile, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was a big thing for a minute. Like I think John has a profile, but I don't. I think I'm blanked out if you had to click on what? me. What? Yeah, which I prefer to keep it that way because you just want to be an enig- enig- enigma record. of some sort. They can click on Buddy's. The, the Buddy's Inc. has an official page. That's good. So okay. they can click on Buddy's Inc. And it, Our wooden loss record's pretty good. Yeah, they can't go just just like detailed in the Joe Murphy's career. Yeah, yeah keep it that way. Is, it, is that MV okay. Young pulling up? Is he is he gonna is he, who knows at this point? Who's getting <laughs> off that train? So here's the buddy's ink page. Okay, it's not exciting. It's but, not. That, wait, I love that the groups are called constellations on oh, here. We're constel- Yo, that is really what good. What is that? That's, that's a, actually all right. Good. There you go. Yeah. That's a hey, cluster of stars, baby. You've had 16 matches according to this. Well, they are missing some, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I went through um they don't count a, anything a, as the buddies pre-show. as buddies. Well, they don't count pre-show matches. Okay. Which I don't know if we had any as buddies. I think mm. we had one, mm. but a lot of my solo career is missing because I opened a few pre-shows. I just, it, it pleases me to no end to look on here and see such matches like wet and wild and icy <laughs> light ladder. 
<laughs> as match yeah. types. That um, one wild match is a highlight of my career. Our first year had some really wild match types. Yeah, yeah. We, we weren't even teaming for like a full year. We already booked WrestleMania week. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> John was that was like John's sixth match. <laughs> Bro's I, out here wrestling in Philly. I remember we have, you know, we're we're gonna do this match, and Joe tells our opponents, it's only John's sixth match, and they this the panic the shifts on their face. Who did you have that night? We had uh, the uh, outfielders. Yes. Yeah. Outfielders. Oh Shane McCoy. Oh and yeah. Oh Weber Hatfield. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we were putting together this match and then like, oh, I, I like literally tapped John on the shoulder. I'm like, man, not so bad for your sixth match, whatever. Uh, and then Weber just literally does like the concerned. Are you sure you're comfortable with all this? <laughs> yeah, I can. I can see Weber doing that. Too. Yeah. Just like, you sure you're good? Yeah, you sure you're good. <laughs> I, the best thing fun. about 880 is is uh, Riz getting to work with uh, be around uh, a lot of his favorite Shakara people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of Shikara overlap with uh, yeah. 880. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I love it. Same. I love the vibe between that and the... Um, we had Tarzan Duran for a minute, too. That was pretty weird. Tarzan Duran. Yeah, well, that was random, yeah, right? I was like, what, did, what is this Tarzan guy? I don't, I don't know. I mean, nothing. WWE champion. <laughs> was he really? I think so. No shit. If, but, if we're talking about like special guests it. at 880 and one of our reactions towards them, Sorg, your reaction... To Soul Taker, my reaction. Oh, oh, I, was, I was so happy. Soul was Taker. Soul somebody, Taker. somebody, uh, that Matt, somebody just commented on the, on on I think his first appearance there, and was like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on, on YouTube, and I'm like, "I think you know what it is. I think, I think, I think it think speaks know. for itself." So you know, I want to um, spar on a mic with him. I'll be honest. Yeah, I, I'm not afraid of it. I I, do that I was just talking oh, about this. You're gonna hang Hudson this shit. I I I want to spar on a microphone. With Soul Taker. Uh, and that's, I, that's one of the main favorite things with 880 is there's literally people coming in that nobody else in Pittsburgh through through connections or awareness mm-hmm. will book. Yeah. No. I literally at 880, you know, and like the like just the, like the the weird stuff I love from other places is coming in because of this funnel between be, between 880 and enjoy because i think there's a very similar mentality there yeah, obviously yeah. there's definitely some dna um and there's some dna um and then <laughs> you know um but uh yeah no so anyways let's let's let's, let's roll this around okay uh, uh some that engaged some guy named john that is your name yeah that is what you are announced as as your government name it's on the book it's on it's a it's your and and somehow you're your own ghostwriter i guess yeah, I mean, we, we can talk about the origins of my name if you want. Yeah. I, I've, I've talked about it before. Good story. Um, and why I've kept this name. Mm-hmm. So I when I was brought in to announce for 880 Wrestling, I was given no notice. Uh, I was told, hey, we need you to announce tonight. And I was asked, what's your name? Um, I did not have a name. So this production company, you may have heard of them, Sidekick Media Services, <laughs> Or I don't know. I called them like twenty different things during the first few months. Mm-hmm. Um, but this uh, is true. They they this just decided true. to call me some guy named John, and they put it up there. And I I've stuck with it because it reminds me that I'm not just some guy. I'm better than some guy. I'm better than all those people in the audience. And I'm up here doing my thing. Mm-hmm. So I I kind of keep it ironically. Uh, as you know, I'm a writer. So. I work irony into things as simple as my name. Okay. I have a last name. Uh, it's up. It's out there. It is out there. Uh, but <laughs> uh, some guy named John, I, I kind of like, you know, I tell everyone, I like being just some guy that beat your favorite wrestler. And I think that's fun. Yeah, we do be beating people all the time. Yeah. Like people fine. don't you like when we beat, win. You have beaten <laughs> the Andersons a lot. We, we, we have beaten the Andersons quite a bit. Yeah, we did. We beat him a ladder match. Yeah, we crazy. had a ladder match with him, yeah. Yeah. No, like I drove six and a half hours, like barely any sleep. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna go ruin the Anderson Brothers yeah. day real quick. <laughs> so that was fun. Yes. Um I, I, I you have a fondness of kombucha? Yeah. Um it was on the it was on the yeah, I have couch. Right here. Oh, oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, there, uh, there, came prepared. <laughs> we we brought some. Uh, we, we always say strapped. Not enough. It's actually quite hard to find kombucha in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm from a civilized place called Philadelphia, oh, where you can find kombucha in your local everything. grocery store. Explains everything. Um, yeah. But yeah, here mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh, there's not many of it. And that's all we're trying to do. Bring some culture and class to 880 Wrestling, that's to Pittsburgh. Uh, bring some fine literature, some fine drinks. Okay. 
All right. I, I think I said it once uh, before. We are we bring live cultures for the cultured. Okay, that's what we provide to pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, you okay for so buddies? You are incorporated. We are incorporated. Yes. In what state? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Right now. Okay. Yeah, we actually we were just talking about this. We we're, we're not allowed to include non-residents of the state of Pennsylvania in Buddies Incorporated. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That seems okay. Limiting. Nico Rodriguez of of TTT Brooklyn. Big fan of Buddies. Would love to welcome him in. Can't. So there's oh. like a lot of litigation or something. I don't okay. Know. The lawyers threw up the red tape. Uh, yeah. Fantastic talent though. But, okay. Well, maybe maybe they can have their own like subset of Buddies Inc. Like just have their own little like. Buddies Limited? Buddies, buddies yep, yeah, maybe. Is, is that, could that be a spinoff? Could that be a, I mean, it could be your, your NWO black and white, if you will, um, you know, in, 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 uh, or, or, or Wolfpack, uh, you know, Buddies Limited, uh, 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 buddies, buddies, LLC. buddies LLC, yes, well, yes. We, we had the Little Buddy program. We okay, oh, we're we really? We were trying to recruit okay. Little Buddies, okay. yeah. but, uh, you know, I think the branding was all wrong. It was hey, kind of like when WWE used to do those scramble matches and people would get confused and go, oh, yeah, yeah. Brian Kendrick champion. People thought these losers were real buddies. No. Okay. Right. They were scouted for their potential to be buddies. It's yeah. like a triple A uh, program. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, they weren't going to be buddies, but you know, if a man tells me one more time, we wanted him in buddies, Inc. Mm-hmm. I do not want, but a man in buddies, Inc. We might have no. to like, we might have to smash him. I, I, I try to smash Banana whenever Don't I can. Smash Banana. Yeah, he has it coming. He knows what he did. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, th- there's he that. Literally made me slip on a banana peel. This uh, happened. I remember claims that yeah. we wanted him in Buddy's Inc. I mean, I, I think the message was quite clear when Joe Murphy tried to like end his career in the center of a ring that yeah. we denied your application. But uh, he get tried, a whole MV Young, like yeah. he threw up the banana signal, and here comes the King of Pittsburgh to just let. You know, the, and imagine the type of beating you have to take for MV Young to to go. All right, I'm just going to go out there and end this. Yeah. And I feel sorry for you, Joe. I wasn't there that week. You got Chester chopped works. to hell, but. But man is not part of the group now. Uh, no one is. Uh, we we kind of well, actually, we call the book the third member. Okay. Uh, the okay. Book is our third member of Buddies Inc. Okay. The uh, empty tag looking, rope. The, uh, the an 880 wrestling rope. mystery. So tell me about the book. How did this come about? What was the inspiration for this? So I mean, a lot of this starts when we noticed that tag teams were disappearing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The Brotherhood, they were gone. Uh, Chaz D'Amato, Still we missing. hadn't seen him in months. I'm still working uh, on it. Though. Tatiana just suddenly vanished, and we realized. All these tag teams were just going somewhere, and we started looking into it. Uh, we chronicled a lot of this on air mm-hmm. uh, as we questioned where these people had gone that had been giving us a hard time for months, and then just suddenly, poof. Initially, I thought it was because they were afraid of us, mm-hmm. and I put on my best detective hat. I went through all the, uh, the trials and tribulations and all the exams. Your best Leslie Nielsen. Y- yes, my yeah. best Leslie Nielsen, searching for the Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's all on my Twitter. I have all my certifications. Uh, I replied to the official 880 account because they did not believe I was a real detective. Okay. So I had to, I had to provide them with the receipts. Okay. And uh, yeah, no. Uh, you it's, have a badge? I, I do, but I'm not allowed to show it. Okay. Yeah. You have to ask for my badge number, and I can't. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. I'll be honest. We didn't solve the mystery fully. We, we No. We well, we we tried to figure out where they went, and we couldn't. But we did realize they were replaced by potential imposters because some of these people came back and they just weren't quite the same. And Mm -hmm. you know, we 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 thought there were two options here: we could either dig into this further, spend more time and resources, or we could write it off and write a book about it. You know, and (laughs) what better what better way to really exploit uh, these missing tag teams? Other than beating them, which we can't do anymore, then writing a book hmm. about their misfortunes. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe exploit. You fell over. Maybe exploit isn't the best term to use, but yeah, profit. <laughs> and that's coming from a detective. Um. So, I uh, you know okay. So you've been on this book tour. Um. Mm-hmm. Uh. We've been we've been very hard pressed to find the book. It uh, sold out. It, 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 what's that? It is sold, sold out. out. Yeah. Sold out. Sold out. I can say it's not in my li- in, in our local libraries. Okay. All right. Pittsburgh. Okay. So it's being it's being uh, taken out by everybody in in yeah. the libraries in the Pittsburgh. Uh, oh, okay. Libraries, of All right. Okay. We focus Obviously. on major markets too. You know, we're in New York. We're in Philadelphia. We're in Chicago. We're okay. in Eastern Europe. Um, yeah. Just Eastern you know, Europe. Pittsburgh. Uh, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
No, we're not going to sell our book room. here. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well, you know, it has been you know, alleged that there's actually nothing in the book. That's a lie. Well, that's uh, nonsense. You, you, I mean, you, have you, you seen you how not, thick it is? I mean, I mean right there. There. you know, but we've not seen any words of it. Pages. Nobody's been able to see into it. You know, I, I have not. I've only heard about these these this book I'm before. Read You're reading you at any point. Yeah, I. You know what? Yeah, I'm very interested in hearing some of the book. Yeah, I, and I'm and right. proving us wrong. Oh, I yeah. you know they leave the leave the allegations for us right now. Get ready to eat your words, Michael Sorg. I okay, I'm, 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 just, I'm just I'm just I am. Listen, I am a uh, investigative journalist. Uh, yeah. And uh, what's that? Are you certified like Joe Murphy? Uncertified. Oh, well. um, mm-hmm. But anyways. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and I just want to uh, convey what I've been hearing between commentary, between the internet, and, and let's, let's, you know, we're here to put, put some stuff to rest. Also, I want to point out, uh, everybody, this is a spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear this, uh, just, you know, you know, fast forward. Well, it's okay. He's, he's early in the book. He's early in the book. We're still in the exposition. This is, I'm, you know, I have the perfect excer- excerpt. It's from chapter mm-hmm. four. So we're not going to get too far into the novel. I'm not doing too much away. A lot of character Any, work. A lot of character work, right? Yeah. Anyone yeah. who follows the 880 product, yeah. some of these beats will be familiar. It's inspired by a true story. Mm-hmm. All right. So I mean, I'll, I'll read this page right now. Okay. There you go. Let's All have right. it. Let's have it. All right. This is the empty tag rope, everyone. Mm-hmm. Carter J. Collins had been missing a week. and Joe Murphy could not get anybody to give a damn. Yesterday's discovery was not going to help things in that department. Joe was as surprised as the rest of the 880 locker room when he discovered Carter's signature purple suit jacket on his chair in the locker room. The scribble note left in the breast pocket, which explained that he had departed to New Orleans suddenly, may have put the others at ease, but Joe knew his old partner. Everybody's favorite tag team had not always seen eye to eye, but Carter wouldn't just up and leave for New Orleans of all places. What had happened to Carter had happened right here at 880, and now right under all their noses, somebody was planting false leads. Joe knew that if somebody had done something to Carter at 880, there was only one person who may have seen it. Actually, two. Mikhail and Chrissy Sword were better than the eyes and ears of 880 Wrestling. They were the production team. Not an ounce of blood was shed in that building without those vultures immediately descending upon the carnage with their cameras to forever capture the brutality. Their business was bringing deranged violence to the masses, and they always needed content. What's this about, Joe? Mikhail said, not turning towards Joe, his focus locked on the screens in front of him. Joe spoke quietly, aware that anybody could be listening. Carter J. Collins. Anybody with half a brain knows he wouldn't have left for New Orleans. Something happened to him, and I think it happened here. Did you or any of your cronies see anything? Of course not, Mikhail said, suddenly turning towards the ring, his face reddening. Will one of you dumb fucks get that chair out of the way of hard cam? He screamed at his employees down below. The redness cooled from his face as he turned back towards Joe. Carter's in the Big Easy. There was nothing to see. The sudden dismissal didn't sit right with Joe. Could Mikhail and Chrissy have had something to do with Carter's disappearance? Had they grown so desperate for violence that they decided to make a little themselves? Joe scowled at Mikhail. If I find out you're lying, I'll show you why they call my signature move a flatliner. Hey now, Mikhail said meekly, his voice quivering. I don't want any trouble. You asked me a question and I answered it. Yeah. That better be true. Carter's gone as simple as that. If you're looking for something to investigate, you should look into that Tatiana mess, Mikhail said as he removed his glasses and cleaned them with his shirt. Tatiana mess? Joe asked, cursing himself for not masking his confusion. Yeah, she's missing. Passing Mikhail. So, um... I, 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 I wrote... That page, and I, I, I still I, can't read it. I, I remember it was feeling something like the day it happened. Uh, I mean, you, oof. so um, you, the, I understand the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Yeah. Where we can I, legally I, keep I, names the same, we did. Okay, uh, all right. Oh, and, okay, you know, all right. Yeah. Some characters were inspired by other characters. Yeah, yeah man, I did, don't know how how to play some of these, but yeah, that's interesting. As to the mystery, I suppose. I, I mean, I don't want to spell it out for you, but. Mikhail and his wife may may be based on the very production team at 880 Wrestling. 
They oh. may have been. May have. May have. May have. For legal reasons. I'm sure Sword Productions is very different than anything you run here. Broad Sword Productions? Yeah. Broad Sword. Very mm-hmm. different. No, no, no. Not Sword. Sword. Like the weapon. Sword. 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 Broad yeah. Sword. Yeah. Totally different than Sword. Yeah. Completely different. All right. Yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's, 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 it's Mikhail. Mikhail. It's Mikhail, Mikhail Sword. Yeah. It's obviously Russian. Sword. Very different. Yeah. It's obviously so Russian. Sorry, I, sorry see, I did it again. I, did I again. see why you're big in Eastern mm. uh, Europe. Yeah. And, mm. You know, that that's what this book's all about. It's about, it, it, it's almost like, you know, OJ's If I Did It. We we don't <laughs> necessarily know what happened to these wrestlers, but this is, you know, if, if we had actually solved what happened to them, this is what would have happened. Yeah. yeah. This is a tragedy at the end of the day. Yeah. they. Oh, it's a bunch of death. Just like the Mr. McMahon documentary. <laughs> well, No. <laughs> But yes, less talking heads, more beheading. Yeah, there's no Bruce Pritchard in our book. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> that, that's okay. That's already better. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, the empty tag rope, uh, you guys will be, um, the, the book tour continues. It does. Yeah. And uh, we've had our uh, contractually obligated reading of the book. That's good. There you go. There you go. And, you know, we can't read to wait to read more excerpts over the coming weeks. Uh, okay. You know, that's something people have been demanding. And, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, kind of like, why bother if the book sold out everywhere? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I love bringing it out to the ring with me, but we don't have to promote I mean, this I mean, I, mean I, keep, lo- I keep hearing the, the Tupac family talk about it a lot. Yeah. Well, they can't yeah. read. So let's go and well, put that I mean, out there. You're, you're reading to them. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, also. do we have options for an audio book, a Kindle version, paperback so down the, second the line? Print, the second print is coming. Mm-hmm. With the second print, there will be an audio book. Um, so paperback. this is all in work. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. So the publisher, they're focused on that. Mm-hmm. We've moved on to the second book. So we're we're already working on our next next project. Okay, we're not quite okay. Ready to talk about it yet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the empty tag rope, it's a success. Uh, I I'm I'm thinking movies. Okay. Maybe a TV sure. Show. Okay. No, it, it's it's definitely going to be a movie. Maybe a mini series if the price is right. So there you go. Yeah. Coming soon to Hallmark. Um. Anyways, Absolutely. some guy named John Joe Murphy, eight eighty wrestling, and uh, on, on coming to a local library near you for yes. the book tour or Barnes and Noble. I mean, we've already outsold other wrestling related authors, have we not, John? Yeah. No, we are by far. The best, the best wrestling authors there are. Yeah. You know, I, I a couple of internet trolls have tried mentioning this Mick Foley fellow to me. Mm. Um, Who never beat? I mean, I know what he wrote, Tatum yeah. Brown, uh, and you probably don't because that book is shit. Uh, <laughs> so Foley, name. put down the pen. We got it from here. Yeah, don't worry, we got this, buddy. Passes. Go stumble off of another Hell in a Cell. <laughs> I hear there's one this I mean, weekend. One, yeah, this is the day. There's yeah. one Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe Mick Foley can fall off of it. He might. That's what he's best known Get for. Get himself another book deal because we, we've we've taken his spot. Yeah, this is no countdown to lockdown. This is actually a successful book. Toddy Tendera is in the chat room asking if the Red Ghost visited the studio tonight. They sure did, buddy. <laughs> we we sure did see did. a Red Ghost. Yeah. Yes. Well, somebody was just yelling outside. I don't know if it was more fans or these book fans that I, are yelling I, outside. Maybe, you know, like there's literally people the in the Murphy street yelling at us. Follow Joe Murphy everywhere. Um, okay. The what you call them? The Murphy addicts. More Murphy. Murphy addicts. Yeah. Murphy addicts. That's Joe Murphy's dedicated fan base. Okay. There's a lot of them. They are addicted. Yeah. They're they're addicted to what Joe Murphy's selling, and uh, as in they can't get away from it. Yeah. Yeah. They follow me everywhere. It's they actually becoming more. a bit of a problem. Okay. Yes, I imagine. So, hope my car's okay. <laughs> who knows uh who knows um anyways uh yeah so find out what's next thursday night 880 wrestling live we won't be there this on week. replay oh, not this week we won't we won't find out this promoting week. the book the book promoting the book heading to michigan Ooh. okay we'll in the michigan next week at the regularly scheduled time though. wait where is it on the hand no, where, where is it on the mitt? This is Detroit. I think, I think it's on. I think your hands backwards. Is it? Oh, sh- hold on. There you go. I think it's that one. Yeah, that's. I like that's Michigan, like. so I don't. I don't want to like uh, get in trouble for pointing at the wrong spot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there a few times. I don't know. I don't know where it is. I do have a Chris Saban story about this. Though. I did get. I did get like up here, you know, and then there's Pennsylvania. <laughs> there oh, oh, that's there smart. Yeah, yeah, somebody point that We're out down there. here then, right? Um, the yeah, logic? I'm using. Hold on, am I using the right? Hold on, hold is on. That, yeah, no, you, I think it's, you got that, that side. This one. This is that side. Yeah. Oh, okay. This there we go there we go anyways that's enough hand stuff uh guys we'll be right back after this and with uh we're going to talk a little bit of aew five-year anniversary is coming right 
less than a mile, about a mile away from here, actually. Uh, and um, and and we'll find out what we learned in wrestling. We'll be right back after this. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like to discuss from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to a gay and his NB on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. Wrestling Mayhem Show still in the studio. Riz is here hanging. Hello. It's Hulk Hogan's me. buddy Buddy Hulk is still on uh, timeout. And uh, the Buddies Inc. are here. Buddies. We, we have that infamous intro. Infamous? Infamous. Yeah, we'll go with infamous. Infamous. <laughs> I think I'm using that right. Um, by the way, what is your intro song? Because, I mean, we've had, well, I guess it's Golden Girls when you guys are coming out. Our tag team theme is the Golden Girls theme. Yes. Uh, with the little intro um, where we sing buddies and mm-hmm. then say everybody needs a friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I solo come out to the theme from the 90s sitcom Blossom. Uh, we we really embraced '90s sitcoms. I noticed, and, and, and it's so wild too. because yeah. you know Blossom was after Alf, so I watched a lot, uh, and I'm like, I know this. Only I a few people this. have gotten the Blossom. I I, mm-hmm. I was down. I had to ask. So yeah. I'm just like, what, what is this? It's such an absurd song, and I remember it from my childhood, mostly because it uses the word. Uh, in my opinion, nation, which is like, that's not a real way to say that. No. Uh, and it's always stood with me and I, I just hated it. And I was like, oh, no, I love that. Mm-hmm. That That's going to work for me. I mean, it really feels like stop all your fuss and slap on a smile. Go out and walk in the sun for a while. No. Song. Don't fight the feeling. You know, you want to have a good time. In my opinion, nation, the sun is going to surely sun- shine. That should be a shirt. Bars. Brilliant yes. lyrics. I there love you it. go. Brilliant. Good stuff. All right. Well, hey, I'll do other good stuff happening. Right here in Pittsburgh, we are going to have uh, a lot of us are going to be going here uh, tomorrow night. Um, but uh, it is the five year anniversary of Dynamite. As, as my wife likes to say, Diamante, who is also not a wrestler. So it gets weird. Um, but. Um, but uh, yeah, so so it, it's five years. I believe we were the second show of Dynamite here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, so I went to the first four. Wow, I was Ooh. like really excited about AW launching. So me and some friends like kind of like did the tour. Yeah, uh, it was convenient when it was back in Pittsburgh. But <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird thinking about like because every once in a while I'll show up in my timeline like five years ago in Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's weird that they've even been around that long at this point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, I, it, it, so I, I kind of want to before we get you know, we got a great slate. They they have tomorrow just announced uh, Brian Danielson and, and Okada. There's a weird step where it's kind of title for title, except that like the first twenty minutes is a continental championship and is is only on the line for. Um, yeah. I think because there's a twenty minute time limit, if I'm not mistaken, on the title. So I think that's their kind of work around there. Something and like yeah, I think it's gonna be a schmoz, honestly. Um, but uh, Britt Baker against I think Serena Deeb. Mm-hmm. And uh, Osprey and Ricochet is gonna be the fucking match for the night. Of Rick course, it? what Ricochet? Ricochet? Or yeah. Is that the, now we've called him Rick O'Shea? Rick O'Shea. Yeah. yeah, previously in the show, but I think that we do need a, a new take on it. Ricochet. Ricochet. Yeah, I, feels I, like another wrestler called him that. I think. Really? <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> It was on a podcast or something. It might have been God. It might have been Jericho. But he get it was right. Around, uh, yeah, it was Jericho. It was right around the time when he was doing the uh, the recoil, like the code breaker. Okay. And uh, it, I think Jericho kept calling him Rakocket. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Mm, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. So uh, I think it's gonna it, again. It's been five years of this. You know, uh, uh, COVID decided. And even I think they were doing some really kind of interesting things during COVID that keep things interesting. Somewhere. Um, God, they only had like what four ish months or so of the show before they had to go into you know uh covid hibernation yeah which yeah. is astonishing mm-hmm. they even survived that yeah. they did uh, such a good job though with wrestlers in the crowd i mean mm-hmm. they, well, once you had wrestlers in the crowd it didn't feel like that i don't know at wwe i i stopped watching for a while during yeah that it period. was tough i couldn't it was tough. do the thunderdome yeah 
Um, it felt weird. And then AEW, it just felt like a normal crowd. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was wrestlers. So they they knew what they loved. They knew mm -hmm. what to react to. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it just made for such a, just a, like a nice little like respite from what was going on in the yeah, world. Absolutely. <laughs> like, what are they going to do this week? How's this going to go? Who are they going to, who am I going to re recognize in the crowd? You know, Austin and Colton gun really stood out during yes. the, during that time period. Like, I feel yeah. like that's like, I don't want to say that's the only reason they're on the run. They are now, but like those, those guys put the work in, but it's a lot of guys like even the acclaimed, like, mm -hmm. they, you know, they mm -hmm. talk about so much about these talent who got over, from that era mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. and there there are guys and it's just because like it was a weird time and you had a chance to shine in the audience as mm -hmm. well and you know it's it's like that it comes up at i at 880 i'm sure it comes up everywhere it, it's the theater thing there's no small part if you have a part in a show and you maximize it you can make a character off of that you know, and people took advantage of it, whether they were playing poker in the audience. Mm -hmm. There were some people who realized, oh, there's a camera on me. I better I better be me. Yeah, yeah. Either way, you're still on TNT at the time. Yeah. Yep. You know, you still have thousands of hundreds of thousands of eyeballs on you. Right. Um, so like, it, yeah, no, absolutely. And, 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 and so many did do so well with that. And plus new opportunities came up because so many people were restricted from the travel mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. got COVID and couldn't be there that week. And they had to fill spots. So like a lot of people got in front of people and you don't know what, you know, how many people, you know, maybe wouldn't have gotten that chance if it was business as usual. So as, as AEW tried to get their, their footing. Um, so kind of state of the business, you know, obviously, I think I think the, the 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 easy statement is generally the business is better for AEW existing. Whether you like what they're doing now or not, there's a lot of detractors, obviously, with it. But I think you're. I really think this is a Nintendo versus Sega kind of argument. Personally, um, I still watch. I think I watch every minute of AEW every every week. Uh, I'm I'm the sicko. Uh, here, so but I also watch like you know Raw and SmackDown. I might come back to NXT to see what they're doing for this new version for CW, uh, which started tonight. By the way, new championships debut tonight. New what? They redesigned some of the titles. Tonight. That makes sense. I yeah. like. I was really worried, uh, probably because the background was literally the uh, multicolored version of NXT, which I hated. Like, oh, and I know that was like, like a, I, I know sword? that was COVID era, so it got weird. I was such uh, a big NXT fan, and that's where I tagged out. I have actually. Yeah. I still don't watch NXT. Hot take. It's hard. It's I hard. used to love it. I used to love it so much. I watch every PLE. Yeah. You know, I don't even watch those. Like, oh. I'm actually now like the cynical jerk about the current NXT product. Ah. Much, much, <coughs> much as I am a uh, new generation apologist, I am also an NXT NXT 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing a theme here with you. Yes. Okay. All um, right. Because, like, again, I, now I know a lot of people don't like it, but a lot of good things came out of NXT 2.0, but it took sure. time. Like, sure. Tony D'Angelo's whole character, like, I don't sure. think that would have ever flew in, yeah. like, the same mm -hmm. space as, like, an Adam Cole. Like, it, you I know. Mean, well, but that early NXT, that's what I really loved, where we had the vaude villains. We had mm -hmm. Enzo and Big Cass. Like, we had these big characters that could have fit almost in any WWE era. Mm -hmm. Um but they they were just existing in their own little world. It's almost actually when they started like including a little more WWE that things started falling apart. <laughs> kind of, yeah. But like, I guess, yeah. Uh, NXT two point was like a bit of a callback to the early days, especially character wise, like work rate wise. Eh, you know, these are all a lot of for a majority of them were just like people from the performance center. Very new, never, very new, very green. Yeah, yeah. But we got we got Braun Breaker out of that. We got a lot of very good talent. Like Mandy Rose had like the run of her career in NXT mm -hmm. two point and I feel mm -hmm. like that's very overlooked. Uh, uh one uh, a couple years ago, uh, it, we you know we used to put. I think we used to start at ten o'clock and we had NXT on and catch the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I think it was one week I had Paul Atlas in here. <laughs> no. and, oh yeah, or Dean Radford or something. And I just loved we had it on and 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 having a Paul or a Dean, you know, who are you know again twenty plus but year vets individually in this thing. Uh, and and very will tell you their opinion of what's going on here. I don't know if you've done a show with either of them, um, but uh, uh, watching them watch NXT mm -hmm. was such a joy because they were just you know what. The is that guy uh, doing? I don't understand that. <laughs> He's got cowboy boots, but he doesn't. But they're wearing something that looks like it should be cowboy. You know, it's like like they were just tearing it apart. Like I don't like you know, generally wrestling in two seconds, you should know what's going on, right? Yes. Like like we all, we all can agree on that. And they're just like, I don't know what this is. How are they putting this on USA Network? <laughs> you know, yeah. which is again like there were is very rough. But also you're there to see the process, and that's why I'm so interested to see 
Now they're on CW, mm-hmm. arguably a bigger platform. Mm-hmm. It's network TV, whether you, whatever you think it is. Oh CW, yeah, yeah, right. So like that's that's like when SmackDown went to Raw. Yeah, it's going to be the biggest ratings bust in everybody else because they're on network TV. CW probably doubled their ratings from USA. I would imagine. Yeah, is is CW in just as many homes as Fox, or because like it's all uh, more or less. It's it's, it's just big. about every market has a CW. Yeah, I the, think the network's past ha- like CW has a really like tumultuous net- network record. Yes, yeah. like they are no longer that initial. This is just the WB and UPN combined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They've yeah. been sold since then, um, and I think they still have that footprint. But it it is a very different company. I was very intrigued to see them get into the pro wrestling game. Yeah. I'm actually looking up real quick. <laughs> I want to kind of see the house. I, I remember. So I was a huge Veronica Mars fan. So <laughs> when, when they launched the CW, yeah. I, I was there and I got like, so their, their first advertising was like a little offensive. It was kind of like, we're just for women. No. Fuck y'all! If you're not, hey, not a woman, hey, Gal- <laughs> Gilmore Girls was fucking great. But though their marketing changed, yeah. and they they kind of Smallville, and it's in the superheroes. They had and, shows for everyone, but their marketing was very much we want teen girls to watch this. And I was like, all right, but I want to watch Veronica Mars and not have my like friends say anything about it. It's just a good show. Yeah, like so so to to break it down, and I think these are the most probably 2024 numbers. Uh, so yeah, it's not as big as Fox, obviously. No, uh, I mean, Fox is top four, and CW is not. Um, Fox is in, according to a quick Google search, uh, the Wikipedia says 87 million U.S. households, um, and this is over the air plus cable, of, yeah. obviously. Uh, CW is in 12 million. That's still pretty so, good. So, but still probably more than Say network households. Let's do, let's do that. There we go. Let's let's do that real mm-hmm. quick. It has a true comparison. Live research. And that is at ninety-one percent of all U.S. households. That, that's that not a com- sound, that's not right? a comparative number. Um, because it's like it's like an upgraded part of like any well, cable subscription. That's a standard. In, it's, yeah, yeah. CW you can just get with an antenna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. that's just that. But it is it is like. Uh, Johnstown probably doesn't have a CW, but Pittsburgh does. Yeah, you know, but it's Johnstown probably like used that. to have the CW. I lived in Johnstown. I, I mean, hypothetically, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Youngstown does. I know, I know, we did not have Fox for the longest time where right. I was oh, wow. in 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 northeastern northwestern Pennsylvania because we had Youngstown and we barely had ABC. Oh, even you know at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, Fox was they basically played the Fox stuff after the late night programming on ABC. Wow. So if I wanted to watch Simpsons or, or, or married with children, yeah. I had to watch it at one in the morning, man, you were in the trenches. I was in the trenches, but then I also did get Fox kids Saturday morning. Oh yeah. And this, in this, and, and this was only on one TV in the back washroom. And that's where I watched superstars. And that's where I watched uh, my X-Men. Uh, so yeah. Anyways. My, my daughter randomly picked Bobby's world from the old Fox. Oh and my it, God. And that was a blast from the past. I, I had not seen Bobby's world since probably uh, 1992. Yeah. Uh, it was, so it was a little yep. weird. <clears throat> anyways, doesn't matter. All of it's going to be a Netflix in a year anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, but what I love about being on the CW is that, that old vibe uh, that you can just stumble across it. Like, yes. As I said, I grew up in Philadelphia, so Channel 48, you just catch ECW sometimes. And when you were a kid, that was like the holy grail. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was mm-hmm. never great mm-hmm. reception, but you mm-hmm. turn it on and suddenly Sandman's there doing his thing. You're like, oh, I don't know what I just found, but it's great. <laughs> My God, I wish, yeah, and and, and, and also bring it back around because SmackDown started as a UPN. Yeah, show sure, yeah. On, which, is, which became part of CW. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I had the Pittsburgh television signal when there was a lineup of, some people will laugh at this part, Shotgun Saturday Night from WWF. Oh, Shotgun Saturday oh, Night. Fuck. PWX in Pittsburgh and ECW. Wow. I could not imagine. And it was like a low power station um, that I think is right over in Green Tree still. WBGN. That's right. IWC was on it in the 2000s. Oh, yeah. I, so, I, yeah. I kind of remember that. Yeah. So that's that's kind of like I watched a couple of episodes there and that's how I was introduced. I watched John McChesney win the Super Indy tournament with a hamburger chest. Uh, so uh, things like that. But back around to AEW, again, 
I, I, you know, we can say how much WWE has done very, very well the last few years, but also I think, you know, part of that credit, I think, is to AEW for, one, pushing the kinds of programming, pushing the superstars, showing different superstars for WWE to make bigger. Jade Cargill, for instance. Cody um, Rhodes. Like, we are back to Cody Rhodes. <laughs> like, Cody Rhodes would not be there right now if AEW wasn't no. a thing to prove right. that he was a commodity. We're telling part two of the story that started in AEW. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Ethan, like, pa- Ethan Page is getting the run of his life oh, yeah, right now. Ethan Absolutely. Page. Fresh off of AEW, just wins their. He NBA was title. on his way to a TV championship program on Ring of Honor television, dropped it, and we're like, "What happened to Ethan Page?" And WWE, and now he's the NXT champion. Well, My even God. even in in a certain way, the things that are happening with like the TNA mm-hmm. angle of everything, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if that doesn't happen mm-hmm. with like Christian. Christian Cage and uh, Christian and Cage won the Impact Championship here in Pittsburgh yeah. the second time they were here. Yeah. I remember sitting wow. in the stands with Chachi. It was the first Rampage we got. Mm-hmm. It was the very first episode of Rampage, and he's like, "Well, he's not dropping the belt, the Impact title on Rampage yeah. in Pittsburgh. Kenny That's Omega not happening." Christian, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was like we almost we were on the barricade, you know, on the on the on the end. Uh, a, a, uh, in the stands, and I think I almost threw myself over the barricade. I was so excited in it. I, I <laughs> for the real sickos, Christian Cage versus Kenny Omega is a dream match. Those guys are very good. Mm-hmm. Like it's one of those things you don't think you want, and it's like no, no, no. The people who know want that match. I mean, I, I've always loved Christian Cage. I'm Same. a huge fan. Mm, absolutely. I, 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 I can, thought he was better than Edge back in the day. And there's probably yeah. a lot of people was like, oh God, Christian Cage in the toast. And he goes like, no, you're going to have a good match. No. You're going to have a good story. <laughs> no, this is, this and, is a blessing. And we're, and we're putting, and we're putting, you know, Nate, Nick Wayne and, and people on a stage. And, so you and, start remembering, and you start remembering them for the next thing they do. Yep. Right. Like, like I, people bitch about Jericho all the time in the learning tree about how terrible it is. Like, yes, it's objectively a terrible thing. That's the point. But that's the point. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I just, I'll hear people, you know, when a storyline's happening is like, Oh no, all the heels, went out, this happened, this happened, this happened. Like, this is terrible. It was like, yeah, you're going to see the next show when they lose, right? <laughs> you know, like that's, yeah, that's, like that's, that's the whole point. We're yeah. building to this. Yeah, like they, they, you build up to that and and Orange Cassidy gets over on them and 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 FT uh Hook gets over on them and 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 that makes you, like you want that's the point. You're it's supposed to be you're not There's certain points where you shouldn't be happy. Leaving WrestleMania 39. <laughs> for instance, yes. right? And I'm sad and puzzled at the chicken. Um, you know, in general, you know, it's just, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but, but my God, it does invigorate things. Um, this has played havoc on the Indies. <laughs> Unfortunately, mm-hmm. it brought CM Punk would not be in wrestling right now. Oh, yeah. Having the story of his life, love him or hate him. It's still good fucking television, right? And you can buy, buy both sides. It's a John Cena effect. You're either yep. there for him or you see to get his ass kicked. Who cares? I did not become a CM Punk fan until after uh, the the muffin uh, <laughs> interview. I'm like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> this yeah, guy's awesome. Yeah, it's like, so what if he assaulted a coworker backstage? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, who hasn't? You just know, just choke him a little bit. Yeah, exactly, just a little bit. But it's just, um, you know, and, and but I'm there for it. I'm there to see these matches. I'm there to see these people, you know, grow in, in, into things. You know, I love the cross pollination with New Japan. I love bringing the elements of New Japan to an American audience. Yeah, you know, and it's not going to be for everybody, including that one guy in the chat room right now. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it's it's just, and it, we say this. Very, you know, if you want good wrestling, AEW, if you want good story, WWE, but man, there's a, there's some good of both in, 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 there's good of both in both of them right now. They both do what they do well. And I, Mm -hmm. you know, there's always going to be tribalism, Mm -hmm. but you know, at, at the same time, there's choice now you can choose your wrestling. Like nobody's Mm -hmm. forcing you to pick one. No, You can just wait till the week's over and just watch the matches that sound good to you. I've decided not to do NXT. I've decided not to do TNA because it took the membership off you, dude. Uh, So If you you could bring Lucha Underground back, I think I'd just be like a happy camper. I know, right? I don't know if they still do. Uh, They they, they tried to kind of capture it. They have like Azteca. The problem is Lucha Underground worked because it was such a focused, high production Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, you know, you have the, some of the best writers of WWE television doing the thing without that they wanted to do 
God, I'm trying to remember because we talked to Chris De Joseph and um, Van Wagnon, mm-hmm. uh, who is a veteran of the television game. Uh, worked on The Apprentice, nice. Or you know, with with you know that guy. Uh, another, you know, I think Survivor or something like that. Please correct me in the chat room research department. Um, and so they knew how to do those things. And and I think when you're talking with those guys a few times that we did, it was like that was the. If you could do a wrestling show the way you wanted to do a wrestling show, what would you do? And this was it. Mm-hmm. And they just leaned into all the crazy and they created their own reality, you know, and and it's just like it was so like Marvel Universe or something and time travel and you were there for it. You yeah. know, it's like, you know, there was like murder. <laughs> you know, so, characters died. Rey Mysterio is still in that fucking cage in the basement. He's dead <laughs> in Boyle Heights, California. I, I love. I don't know. Yeah, it was one of the only companies where killing people off actually. I'm sorry, worked. Big Brother was the one he worked on, not Survivor. Oh, okay. Well, no, uh, TNA killed off a couple people. They killed off of. Uh, they oh, killed off that only when it worked in it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't count Eric Young. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he's he back come back? Too. Yeah, yeah. He, they they wish him back with the Dragon Balls. But uh, to, <laughs> to kind of circle back to like the Vince documentary, Shawn, Ma- Shawn Michaels has a very interesting quote in that where he's like where he's talking about all the ridiculous stuff he did, kind of like you know in the Attitude Era to, mm-hmm. to kind of clear the air. But he said something along the lines of like wrestling is at its best when you can respect it for what it is, but also acknowledge how ridiculous it is. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like that's something that like Lucha Underground did very well, and I think that's something that you know. Other companies do it very well, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no, I, I'm fully in agreement with one of the best wrestlers in the world whenever they say that. Which yeah, is kind of yeah, I forget. Crazy. But, what, yeah, we, the, 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 that whole like, no, we're here to buy into it. It's a stage show. We're here to, you know, carry in the movie. Like, I, I, I that the it's outsiders, an art form. It yeah, is. it's an art form. It's that. Yeah. yeah, it's all that stuff. You're you're there. Hopefully, you're entertained by buying into it. Uh, it you know, okay, some people believe it, and okay, um, you know, but. Still Everybody in the building, while they're in the building or have it on the TV, are there to believe in it. Yes, as a concept. Mm-hmm. So why you know? Listen, if I go to the Empire strips back, I'm not going to be like this is fake. You know, yeah. it's a it's a Star Wars parody themed strip show that's been touring the country and it's in Pittsburgh. And I really think I'm going to go Sunday. Uh, but <laughs> you're prerogative. We talked we talked about it on on, on awesome casts and it sounds amazing. Um. But, uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, actually, probably not too far from pro wrestling now I think about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, that's kind of the magic of it because, uh, uh, my family, uh, like my little brother, my girlfriend, they, 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 they have no, like, they have no idea what, like, anything about wrestling aside from what I do. Mm-hmm. So, like, whenever they're around, that if I have something on, like, I'm trying to explain to them, like, yes, it may not be real, but, like, you're supposed to enjoy the story like you would anything. So like, you know, like, like to piggyback off the Star Wars thing, it's like, yeah, you know, I, I know they're not actually out there fighting with like, you know, laser swords, but like the story itself is something I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. But absolutely. Uh, in the, once you broke, like once you get over that barrier with the, with the casual uh, fan is like, I feel like that's when you have them. That's something I talk with Chris LaRusso like in, in, you know, a lot, especially whenever buddies were kind of first teaming. Um, pulling back the curtain a little bit there mm-hmm. but yeah like I, I would always text my girlfriend and like have her watch the show i'm like what do, what do you think and then i would go over it with larusso it's like so, so this worked and this didn't because she has no you know outside She's a perfect yeah perfect and, and that's yeah and, and that's your audience it's not us yeah. you know again when you're like why are they doing this it doesn't make sense or, well, they should be doing this it's like nobody you know that they, they, they're doing what they think the audience is going to get yeah and they're going to be reacting to it and i think people forget about that too so, but, um, but no, I very excited. Good to see them at five years. I'm waiting with bated breath to see what they do. Um, and I think the biggest celebration of five years is we all outlasted Bleacher Report live. Yeah. They did. <laughs> did you yeah. see that? That's over. Uh, they are dying. Probably a Fox or probably a, a, a Warner Brothers Discovery situation yep. there more than anything. Well, Swerve does say uh, Fox. Swerve's out there doing interviews. Swerve's saying, saying Fox? Swerve, Swerve, Swerve did oh, an no. interview and he said, we're not talking about it yet, but I'm TK's boy, so I can say it. We're going to. <laughs> he basically said we're going to Fox. He's wow. like, we took SmackDown spot. You'll hear about it soon. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? Well, let's hope okay. that doesn't ruin the deal because that's usually a thing you can't talk about. Yeah, yeah. I just asked Conan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's because uh, apparently something got fouled up with the Lucha Brothers uh, there. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's I, rough, I get, buddy. Okay, uh, we'll take a moment on this. Allegedly. What I caught, let me know if you guys heard anything different. This is mm-hmm. all allegedly, this is all dirt sheets. This is so, please take the dirt sheet grain of salt. We need like a code 
you know, kind of like how we have the spoiler codes when we're talking about movies. Yeah. Like we need a a don't believe everything you hear right now part of the show. You know, so help us think about like what's the code? What do we you scream I, I out it. when you get to us? It's it's the Melter Classic where it's like like um obviously this was the plan, but plans always change or whatever he says whenever his predictions don't come true. Yeah, J- just go. literally copy and paste that. That's your that's your tagline. Yeah, I was like. Uh, like this weekend, there was like the news about supposedly Kevin Dunn and Vince were getting together to do a counter <laughs> counter to the yeah. Mr. McMahon documentary or something, which was darn sure that'll be absolutely bu- absolutely bullshit uh, yeah. thing that people just made up. And, and while Linda's like going on camera saying Vince is not doing well now that he's retired, like she oh she, she, has? she gave that interview like two weeks with a political place. Oh really? Um, oh, she's yeah. like heavy. Oh, because she is she's probably campaigning for yeah. Trump and stuff, right? So she's so. doing the full campaign, and somebody asked her at a campaign event how how is vince doing she just bluntly said not well <laughs> they're still uh, married isn't that crazy are they <laughs> yeah. seriously they're still married yeah. after all that shit like they're probably like separated but like they're, yeah, I think yes. they're just separate i think they're, they're sham separate. marriage now like I don't. Think oh yeah it, like, it's just a you know it's like come on is bill hillary really, they probably are bill and hillary prenup? still a thing their yeah. prenup and all hasn't probably been worked out in years their assets are so heavily tied. Yeah. They probably really want to get divorced, mm-hmm. and it's just too much work. For I think help. they have an understanding. They're like one <laughs> of us. One of us will die soon. This right? is this is a business marriage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is. Um. It is what it is. You know. Um. I mean, and it's not the weirdest thing of a political couple. So. No. Uh, God, politics again. Fuck. End this fucking campaign. Everything is wrestling. God. Uh, <laughs> even got into the documentary. <laughs> yep. When you have ha- Hall of Famers from WWE in an election, it gets weird. It does get very weird. It, does. it happened twice now. Yeah, <laughs> multiple, twice. multiple. I, I wish, oh, I wish wrestling personalities would stay further away from politics. That's my one hope I, for 2025. Uh, I don't know. President Rock is supposed to be. A I'm, I, you know, t- yeah, uh, tw- yeah. President Dwayne Johnson. I'm kind of here for in that was in that a, was in that was young uh, rock in the in the way that i yeah basically that was the premise of like young rock was basically his feelers for it that um, work out. there was there was young rock and then there was also in the 20 i think the i think the last video game 2k24 okay. there is <laughs> there is a um thing where president rock comes out in the rumble oh in the this rumble just like this it's is escorted by Secret Service. This is just yes. I go God. I gotta get through that story then. Um, no, there is a. There, it's just I like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. There was always allusions to him becoming the president. Like there's the if you watch Demolition Man, there's the Arnold Schwarzenegger Presidential Library. Yeah. <laughs> so he also and, and he did Hall of Famer. And he God, he is. <laughs> wow. God, politics is wrestling. Oh my God, yeah. they were so right on that documentary, and they only mentioned one guy. Um. So I'm. So broken on that. We did have somebody on years ago. I believe it was during the first uh, uh, run. It was. Li- it's literally a book that is compares the life of Vince McMahon and Donald Trump, oh. and talks about the parody mm-hmm. of their past. So there you go. Oh, that's all I'll say. I mean, when when I was watching like Succession, it was hard not to draw parallels. Dude, between did you not uh, wait, wait yeah. till you watch this documentary? I heard that you're going to scream Succession, just like Succession. I mean, the whole show I went. Times. This is about the McMahon's. It's like yeah. it's not about the McMahon's, but this is about the McMahon's. Yeah, I mean, I I I think again, it's kind of that rich person defunct dysfunction I was talking about, and mm-hmm. now you add its family dysfunction on top of the dysfunction that involves money and what people think they're owed as. Uh, inheritance and stuff like that, you know, it just like it, it deforms people, you know. It does. It, and 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 I, you know, uh, there was a uh, some some somebody some news came out about a rock star that um um is um uh that definitely has a new kid from a different mom uh situation i, I had and a I'm, child born outside of my marriage which and is I'm, very and i'm reading the up. i'm literally reading the book about him and i'm literally in a chapter about how great it is to be a parent oh and um and 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 boil that on top of already being hard to swallow because a person who couldn't have kids uh it, it was just like yeah fuck this i'm out i'm nice. not reading the rest of this book uh, that's two hours i'm not getting to you yep. know uh, audiobook guys uh so like like it's it's just like and, and I was having a discussion with somebody, and I was like, okay, the fact that he's a, it would, he would be a rock star and have a functional marriage without any issues would be a fucking miracle. Unfortunately, this is the norm because of the environment, yeah. honestly. Uh, you know, I always say, 
feel like I'm re- we're going in the Patreon territory here. And uh, you know, it's your show. Well, you know, it was going to be a short one, but never mind. Um, oh God, we stopped recording. <laughs> oh. How long? That's all right. We have backups online. Okay. I think since the break, I forgot to restart it. Uh, so um, it's going to be a fun edit tonight. I bet. So um, what was I getting to? Fun. Oh, yeah. I, was, I say the um, – because people get, keep getting pissed off about people we deal with in professional wrestling. Yeah. And it was like, well, Can't see why. what kind of people do you think become wrestlers? Dude. All the well-adjusted people? <clears throat> you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay like i again going back to uh talking to people who are not in the the wrestling bubble and explaining to them like how things happen and mm-hmm. stuff like that mm-hmm. and it's just like what why are people like this and i'm like that's a great question that i don't have time to answer for you right now because it would take me three days and i'd write a whole thesis on this but like there are normal people in wrestling but they are few and far between mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. no no if, if you're like hey i gotta you know allegedly AJ Styles has had the same wife since before he was famous and all that kind of shit and mm-hmm. everything's cool. But then you have the rock who's like, you know, strange, uh, uh, uh divorce, but business relationship with his wife. Yes. You know what I mean? So like rock couldn't get the shit done yeah. and be a, a normal, you know, allegedly normal marriage if there is one, um, kind of thing. So like, it's just, yeah, I think it just like, there's so much pressure. If you're I mean, so much pressure on marriage in general, if you have a normal job yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. for people can't keep shit together. And and I think it just it just adds on to that. And the more popular and the more crazy the 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 style, the lifestyle of that profession, I think it just, you know, you got to be crazy strong and crazy in for it to yeah, make no. it all work. Tell, uh, telling my girlfriend I'm going to drive five hours to go to a different state just mm-hmm. for like five minutes in a match and like she comes along she's like oh I want to travel and I'm just like you're not going to want to after this mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. like we're in the in the car ride home she's like why did you do this why did you do this and I'm just like I brought somebody with me to do understand. to do to do a wrestling show and and he didn't realize I was like hey can you just like help the DVD table and tag along and he's just like these are long days I'm like yeah they are yeah, yeah they are yeah. yeah that's what we do you know mm-hmm. and the show and the show was only an hour away. Yeah. Um. So uh, an hour and a half, maybe. Um. That, that's that's it. That's it. Um. The, uh, there was a um another similar video professional uh, in very similar line of work with me. Uh. That I was talking to a couple years ago. Done a little bit of work with them. And um. It, it, it just the independent video professional. Uh, uh. Could not keep his like girlfriend's like. I'm not down for this life. You know. <laughs> and it was just like well. At least you made the decision now, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So, like, those kinds of things. And, and it, I think that all kind of goes together. So, it's tough out there, guys. It and sometimes we make it tougher by the life choices. Yeah. You know, like, it, it was a world of a difference. I, so, I trained first 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. I, I, I tried it out in Philly. And it was such a such an interesting experience. And that, that's the kind words I will say. Uh-huh. Like, yes. Uh, that, I, I don't know, even though I wanted to get back into it. Um, yeah. When that my my school at the time relocated and I I was a non driver so I just kind of fell out of it and the reason I think I fell out of it so easily is just like I didn't connect with a lot of the people there and mm-hmm. it was such a different culture and in Pittsburgh now I think there are just so many cool people involved in the wrestling scene and it feels a lot less shady uh, than what what I encountered in my twenties maybe that's just age. Maybe that's realizing mm-hmm. that some of what people say is utter bullshit. And yeah. I'm just trying to like reflect this persona, but um, it was intimidating in my twenties. And I kind of went like, is this a world I want to be a part of? Mm-hmm. Cause some of these people suck. Um, some of them were great, but some people were truly just not people I wanted in my life. And I, I think I waited for a while to get back into it. And when I did, I was just like genuinely surprised by the amount of amazing people I met. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. They do exist. Well, on that note, well, we got deep for a minute there, didn't we? <laughs> so uh, let's. that means it's a great time to talk about our friends at Slice on Broadway. Because what brings people together than over some great pizza? Our friends, New York City style, Yins are made, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, North Hills. Oh, I wanted to take a picture because they had an updated list on something. Because we went a couple weeks ago. Uh, our friend, uh, old school Mayhemers, will remember V-Rock was in town from San Diego. And uh, and we got to hang out and we went to Slice. And I guess she'd never been to Slice before. So um, And I was like, I don't know how we have have pizza on the west coast so <laughs> at all um tacos yay pizza eh, 
iffy out there. Uh, so uh, go go check them out. Slice on Broadway, the OG, the original. I love sitting up there and uh, watching the train go by on that the old location. I know Riz finds stuff. Who was it? Somebody was just talking about how they live like next door to a slice. It's one of the jocks last week. Apparently live oh, right Chris. next to one. Um, oh shit, I just blew up there. <laughs> well, you're going to look at the location the list and say, there's a jock by one. I just helped out the stalker. Uh, anyways. This slice, I, I got kind words for them, though. They When I, I, I challenged unsuccessfully for the pizza championship, I mm-hmm. had the most recent no ring. That's right. I actually hit up this very slice on Broadway uh-huh. uh, for a bunch of pizza boxes and pizza supplies because mm-hmm. I had. Did you tell them it was for wrestling? I did, and they were very excited. They do love that. I do. I used to talk to them all the time about shows. Beastman destroyed that slice on Broadway one time. <laughs> that's right. uh, so that's a thing that happened. Before he turned cool. Before he turned cool. Definitely still, before he turned cool. So I was searching for Cool Beastman. Um, that had to be suspended. I heard. Yeah. It, the, wait, the search has been suspended? It, it, was I, that from I, the higher ups? Was that from management? I, I got an official written cease and desist. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. was, that, was that the second book? No, that was not the second book. That that's was like gonna a be personal that, thing. That's going to be the Netflix documentary. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Search for Cool Beast, right. man. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, be- we've, we've had fun working with Beast, man. That's all I'll say. I, I, we, we had an idea <laughs> for something that would have been really cool. Yes. Um, we, we haven't worked with Cool Beast, man, since the, or any version of Beast, man, since the very beginning <laughs> of Buddy's Inc., he powerbombed my best friend on top of me. It was pretty yeah, crazy. I, yeah, I, I actually, it was an interesting thing because our match got delayed. And I'm I'm so bummed about this because it got pushed by one week and I had this whole Elmo promo plan because it was it was that exact week where Elmo did that check in on people's mental health. <laughs> and so I immediately, like two days later, grabbed an Elmo, like stuffed animal from one of my kids and went, I'm borrowing this. And I <laughs> had a whole thing planned I wanted to do. Uh and it probably wouldn't have been smart because I didn't do it. And I still got power bombed on my best friend. Yeah. Uh, but God, it would have been funny. One day. <laughs> one day. One day. Yeah. One my day. impersonation oh my will reach 880. Well, let's wrap the show, everybody. What did you learn from wrestling this week? This week. Or really, if you're not a regular on the show, uh, recently. Mm-hmm. We can say recently. I mean... It wasn't this week, but uh, I had it brought back up to my attention. And like, it's it's probably the best thing I've ever. It's probably the best advice I've ever gotten wrestling in general, because uh, I think I, I've talked to you pr- uh, before about Joey Sinceri, and he mm-hmm. might be making a return. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, <gasps> you're putting that out there. Maybe, maybe, Ooh, maybe, oh maybe, 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 maybe. But Joey Sinceri gave me the best advice I ever heard in my life, and I had to feed it back to him. And uh, this <laughs> this advice might be. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people won't like it but uh he said to me right around the time when i stopped wrestling for a while and i'm just like yeah i don't know man i don't think i have it in me anymore and he's like get it out of your system now because you don't want to be 40 years old wrestling like you know kids and like you know like in the middle of nowhere or something like that Mm -hmm. i'm like yeah that is really good and then now he is (laughs) uh living in indianapolis with his with his beautiful wife and his child on the way he's like i miss wrestling i'm like well man i'm gonna hit you back up with the same thing get it out of your system now so you you don't regret it later, and you're not that person you're des- you described, and uh, yeah. So he he's uh, he, he's doing something. We might got something planned for him. Nice, nice. So, I love to hear that. I, yeah. One of my favorites, uh, definitely on shows that we worked with him. Um, and then just send this clip too. Man, what's that? I'm gonna yep. send him this clip. All right, yeah, we'll see if the AI picks it up. So he'll probably get it anyways. Um, uh, John, what about you? You got one? Yeah, I probably learned something in wrestling this week. Um. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's been such an interesting week with anniversaries and like retrospectives in history. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's just that anything, no matter how small or how big in pro wrestling, might come back to bite you in the ass or get you over. <laughs> like, it's the little things in pro wrestling that really add up and matter and make a character or, mm-hmm. uh, or make a career. Um, and it, it's just so it's so fascinating to to think back of pro wrestlers and like life choices they made and how it may have impacted them. Like I always look at edge, you know, mm-hmm. if that stuff with Lita didn't happen, would we have edge? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, well, we have the radar superstar, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it, it, and that's what differentiates it from any other like art form almost is that, that real bleed of real life into it all. Uh, and I, I think just with that documentary coming out, Five year anniversary of AEW. It's it's really easy to think about that history, mm-hmm. and you know just how wrestling 
has such a weird relationship with its own history. Um, because I got Hulu again. Uh, I started watching again the Hidden Treasure show. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, um. Interesting show, but I realized after watching the Stolgold episode, I don't know. I, I uh, want to watch several more hours of WWE sucking their own dick because um, that's how right, I felt. The, I'm like, like hey, oh, you're going to tell me for another five minutes how great Stone Cold was? Okay, there we go. Um, so, but it's getting that reality show kind of vibe to it. Oh, but yeah. uh, you kind of see that, but you but you kind of see what you're talking about, about like, hey, here's the, they were looking for the knee brace he wore, right? So it's like... Like he what? Has you know, hundred knee braces. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. You know, uh, and then the uh, smoking gold, smoking skull belt, and they were literally look. They're it. trying to find the cement truck that 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 Jesus. they dumped on the Camaro, right, and all this stuff, and just it was just yeah, again that kind of like you know, you that's the whole point of the show, of course, but um, but it's very interesting. So Lita can even save it for me. I used, uh, to, I used to love those fluff shows on the WWE Network when it first mm-hmm, started. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All they did was like count. They keep doing. It. now great. now AEW does it, or oh. A&E does them and it's just mm-hmm. like oh okay you know I guess you know we, we, how many times do you need to tell me about the Attitude Era you know how many times do Demo I need to hear it. about this rivalry it's just like yeah. it's not like I kind of watch the AEW stuff and I'm still like ah, is there anything new here it's just going to tell me the same and I have to watch commercials now I, I don't know anyways I guess that's what I learned in wrestling this week. <laughs> I, was like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, good. Somebody in the chat thanked me for that show because I think they worked on it a little bit. Um, anyways, uh, Mad One says I learned that Bronson Reed is a fucking future world champion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was amazing. That match last night. They destroyed the yeah. ring. They took yeah. out a row of fans. They did. <laughs> fans. They did. So um, they things- did the ring spot, which I kind of. Mm-hmm was looking at a lot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cool. seth um, came back yeah seth seth came back uh braun looked like he had like did something to his knee with and he started running, yeah. which is weird braun Strowman's uh, knees look like they're crying for help yeah, I, I thought that was just generally yeah. how he ran now i didn't realize that something caught like, with was, them it, it like, like it might have been how he runs now but like i feel like he's getting to the kevin nash phase of his uh <laughs> His career, like just like the bad just don't wheels, go off the top, or don't just don't break your leg again. I just can't wait for him to become X Division champion. That's the TNA crossover we need. We need Bronson, not Bronson, uh, Braun Strowman to go to TNA and try to go for the X Division championship and and get tutored by Chris Saban and 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 Alex Shelley. Just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just rewatched that promo with Kevin Nash. I've been on a show uh, with both the Motor City Machine Guns. Just, just want to drop that. What's that? <laughs> I've been on a show with both of the Motor City Machine Guns. I just want to drop that. I've had a, I had a pleasant conversation with Alex Shelley in the bathroom a couple months ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> real quick, can I tell yeah. my Chris Saban story? <laughs> uh yeah sure Sick. okay so uh i rode with uh hollywood bubby george ross okay right. hollywood hollywood bubby that's we're calling keep, him he now hates it. I, that's what i keep calling him and we're definitely going to keep saying it on the yes, show and absolutely. in person hollywood bubby um but so it was like it was like an apology thing because i had a whole injury and everything like that and george was like don't worry bobby i'm gonna get you on the same card as uh as chris Saban. i'm like oh, okay cool so we're riding out there and i keep telling george i'm like dude <laughs> as soon as i see Saban, i'm gonna do the i'm gonna do the motor city thing to him he's like Bobby, you can't do that to save it. And I'm just like, watch me. <laughs> so uh, I'm putting my match together. And then I, I'm going back outside to check with the uh, runners, see if everything's cool. And then uh, Saban passes me in the hallway. And as he passes me, he has his hood up and everything like that. And I just go like this. And then he just starts laughing. And I'm just like, got him. All right. <laughs> and I go up to tell George. I'm like, George, I did it. And he's like, well, what did he do? D- did he get upset? And I'm just like, no, he laughed, George, because none of this is none of this is meant to be taken seriously. And I wrestled in front of Gabe Sapolsky that night. It was crazy. <laughs> I feel like everybody like Gabe is everywhere. It's weird. He's very well. I have seen. I have run into Gabe in that like I talked to him once or twice uh, in three different states, <laughs> four different states actually. That tracks. <laughs> this is crazy. Um. Anyways. Um. But uh, from the chat, more from the chat, more from the chat. Matt, True Prince Pro, Matt Birch. Shout out to you, Bob. There you go. Uh, Learned that Buddies Inks has the best tag team finisher in all of 880 wrestling with the murder they wrote. Shout out to Angela Lansbury. Yeah, mur- we, we officially debuted our new tag finish, Murder. They wrote it the mm. last show. Mm-hmm. Killed Groove uh, Allen. Great, great name. Just mm-hmm. going to say it. We have a great That's name. great. That's fantastic. <laughs> I feel like, I God, I feel like... RJ City will be jealous of that name. <laughs> that's that's okay. the goal, man. I mean, he, he did have the knee Arthur. The knee Arthur? Oh. Do you, you know yeah. about this? 
I I I I I didn't know he had a, a move called the knee art. No, no, he literally pulled down his knee pad, and there was B. Arthur on another <laughs> knee pad <laughs> underneath. And the the good night everybody sleeper hold, which is uh, mm-hmm. Chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. Uh, go, go! It's all on the YouTube. Check out RJ City's IWC I run. I need to catch a lot of uh, RJ City's old stuff because it's good. That's a guy. I, I guess I missed out on a lot of mm-hmm. his like indie independent mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. and AW turned me on to him in a big mm-hmm. way. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I. I'll occasionally like click on a link that y'all post yeah. for him having an old IWC match or something, but uh, I do need to go back and watch it's good more. stuff. Good and stuff. it's him and He's Dalton, and Dalton's another guy that was just always so much fun to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just saying, there's some black and white stuff in there. You know, That's just great. saying, just saying. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, God, like three side notes here. Uh, side notes of a side note. One, uh, before I forget, Tina apparently just discovered, because uh, sent, I don't know, send a picture in the chat of RJ on, what was the show, Splat a Lot? I don't know if she knows the backstory or just generally found that or not, but I, we definitely talk about it the first interview we did with RJ here on the show. Nice. Um, it's, it's actually really fun to hear like how he started with it and what he became as, uh, as part of the creative on there. Um, and... If you have not yet, go see the Tony Storm promos from, I believe it's Stardom. There's a thing with Stan Hansen that ends with the line, then he hit me with the lariat, but not with his arm. And then there's a thing I had to send it to Katie was something about I got thighs like Godzilla and wings like Mothra and I'm going to destroy the city. I was like, it's it's. My God, so fucking you know, good! It, it's funny. Like I, I, I'm obsessed with Tony Storm. I'm a, she's uh, amazing. And when I was first starting training, that I the pitches for me uh, were to be a, an old timey wrestler, mm-hmm. and I honestly was too afraid to do it because Tony Storm was just starting her act, and I was mm-hmm. like, I don't want to touch this because she's perfected it, like. Mm-hmm. I can't I do think that. There's room, though, right? Uh, there's a respect for it. I yeah. think you could do your own take. There's a lot of old timey things, you know. Maybe you can pick it up. Why not? I mean, I I, I was a big vaudeville fan. Yeah, I, I didn't know mm-hmm. that T-shirt. Uh, but I think it was just the timing, and she was doing it. You're so doing well. you're doing the '90s sitcom thing already. Yeah, we got bits of it. We you didn't know, go quite as far. That's all. But I mean, maybe at some point, we you know, laugh tracks to it. At some point, maybe there's just a, 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 a you know, a, t- a turn, you know, a phase, and you just well, you just think you're on Family Matters. Well, I we we've, we've really we wanted to do uh, I don't know what's like a, a sitcom intro video for a while. That's oh, we something should, we're still we've talked about strangers. filming numerous times. Perfect strangers. Let's have a discussion. Smile. Let's, let's have a look, 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 there. You notice I got a green screen over here. <laughs> you notice I li- literally had to set up a green screen today. So I'm just saying yeah, we, we can do some things. I just want to do a bunch of innocuous tasks. Mm-hmm. And whenever a camera points at me, wait two seconds and then look and smile. That's the best. And then your name goes across. Mm-hmm. Or like have everything just fall out your hands and just go like, oh, oh no. Man. Yeah. No, that's what I want. I want all the credits just to be written and like starring us, written by us, produced by like all that nonsense. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that's what I want. Um, and sort of Ponder learned that, he does, that if you don't believe in CTE, then it doesn't exist because Stone Cold said so. Yes, mm-hmm. I, I mean, the- and um, just just want to point out from that same documentary, uh, there was not ninety three thousand people at this. Uh, yeah. Brother. The turnstile brother. actually said 73. Like, dude, brother. dude, if your catchphrase is literally what and asking people to repeat yeah. themselves, yeah. maybe just stay far away from that topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I, I beat that joke to death like that week because yeah. I said oh. I said the, uh, well, the CT isn't real because Stole Cold said so like five times in the locker room and the uh, the buddy snatcher who is pr- who is portraying Tatiana right now. It's like, Joe, you know, <laughs> how many times are you going to say that joke? And I'm just like, I can't remember. I have CT. <laughs> I don't. I don't. For... <laughs> Just so we're clear, but I love you said I don't, as if you said no, I don't really have COVID. Don't worry about it. You <laughs> yeah, know, no. <laughs> like like it's infectious. An like it's an, no, uh, I'm it. not going to spread it through the locker room. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so. And then all of a sudden, everybody had CT. It was yeah. it was crazy. You know, it turns out really infectious. Uh, Riz, did you? What did you learn? That's what I learned. Oh, that's what you learned. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Buddy Zinc. More fun than expected. Always. And so was the and the book was more insightful than expected. Yeah, I I told you. It's yeah a real he, thought, book. he thought it wasn't real sword. Ah, no, I was reporting the the vibe the, the, from I mean, the internet Mikhail, that it wasn't I mean, real. Mikhail, Mikhael sword. sword, I sword, sword, sword. 
sorry, continue. Yeah. No, I was gonna say sword. It, it's 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 a real book, and it's I'm pretty sure it's gonna be on Amazon. Yeah, I mean, physically sometime, see it right? sometime I mean, eventually. Once, yeah, once they do the second print, yeah. it'll totally be on Amazon. I'll wait for the uh, audiobook. They can listen to it on my walks, I guess. You know, that, what it, uh, you know. M- Matt, your other co-host, co-host. He, he has a copy of the book. Uh, Nico oh. Rodriguez got a hand hand signed copy of the book from T two T Brooklyn. Okay, okay. okay. I'm still there. waiting for mine. I, I, is oh, it, I haven't seen them. Hard to find. Or? Like it's in the people mail. People don't pretend a new iPhone is fictitious because they can't buy one at the store. Yeah. No, they go. Oh, it's so popular. I can't get one. Yeah. You mean, and you mean oh, this all right, Yeah, you can get an you iPhone. Sure. You, you okay. had to order yours. But though. did you find our yeah. book? I'm just saying that's how popular we are. No, I even asked the UPS man that delivered it today. Oh. Better than the new iPhone. He said. He Absolutely said. He said. Me. Never heard of the book. Well, what does and he know? He can't read. He's from Pittsburgh. That's the whole thing we're are, saying here. And why are you asking me? The books are in boxes. <laughs> Sword, you sound like you're defensive here. He's very defensive. I'm just. You, you just know, make Sword, what's going on? We, we have some history. I I used to talk some shit. This on our is production. true. This yeah. is true. We'll talk about it. We got Patreon coming up here. Want to make sure we don't keep people too late here, because uh, some of us have early mornings. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Buddies Inc. Eight Eighty Wrestling Thursday Night Fights on the Indie Wrestling US uh, YouTube and Network Free, 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 and everything. Uh, oh, uh, Mad One says he got his advanced coffee as an ebook, and it was great. That's good. There you Thank go. You. There you go. I think that's what we're down to. Digital. Yes. Riz is also a Riz and Riz does Riz things. things. And I Twitch. You you on Twitch? I do Twitch things I, sometimes. I, I I do lazy Twitch. Went on, I actually went on Friday and played uh, TCG or TCG store simulator. It's a really addicting game. I'll have to Google uh, all those words later to figure out what the hell it meant. <laughs> Well, trading card game sort of simulator, I believe. Yes. It's, oh, it's up there. Thank you. Jeez. Thank you. Yes. I'm a big trading card guy. That's why my jacket's so shiny. It is way mm. too it is, is way too addicting. I don't know why. Okay. We'll discover that later. Um at Sorgatron on the social media to see what's up with me and also fun clips from this show are usually shared. In other shows that we do. Some are mindfulness. Some also involve wrestling. Um <laughs> putting the clips up from a year ago on the mindfulness show. Uh, you might see some familiar pieces on there so thank you everybody stay tuned for the patreon if you're on the feed with us uh over there or catch it later in the week uh as we post it and thank you everybody until next time may hem else this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast Network. find out more at sorgatronmedia.com